I mean, if you're in that position, you're going to say the same things he said to us yesterday. But ultimately, well, they got to get that win. It's not about being close. Right? This isn't horseshoes. This is about trying to finish when it matters the most late in games, something they've been unable to do. Michigan's strength is their defense. They won the toss and deferred. Not a surprise. They will put their defense on the field to begin. And we are underway. Sent deep by Kenny Allen. And too deep, it looks like, for a return by Mike Majette. So it will be a touchback. It will come out to the 25. And our first opportunity to take a look at a very interesting player as far as the professional scouts are concerned in Nate Sudfeld. He's every bit of six foot six. He's got a very clean release. There's not a lot of wasted movement. It's, it's why there are a bunch of NFL people here. Now, he's got some physical to development still to be had. Kevin Wilson thinks his best football is ahead of him. But he has control of this up-tempo system. He will get the ball out of his hands, sat just 11 times. But he's going to need his people on the perimeter to win some of those man-to-man -man matchups. And you see it right from the start, that press coverage. Number one of the Big Ten in passing yards per game. Number three in touchdown passes is Nate Sudfeld. He'll start a pistol look and hand one off to Jordan Howard. And Jordan Howard has been a really nice surprise as well. Coming to Indiana as the transfer from UAB. They lose their program at UAB, so he is free to transfer. Joined this team in the spring. And he's working on 15 career 100-yard rushing games. And he's looking at the 1,000-yard season coming on the heels of Tevin Coleman from a year ago. Sudfeld outside. This will be short of the first down. Trying to fight his way to the sticks was Mitchell Page. It will be third down and three. Right away, you're going to get into a down and distance that fits Indiana's script, and this is exactly where Michigan has been one of the best in the country. Third down defense, number two in the land. Something that you said impressed you about Nate Sudfeld on tape when we were watching together always seems to have a plan when he steps back from center. And you should, three years into the system, very comfortable with where everybody is. They'll hand it off on third down. Jordan Howard, he's got the first. Six-yard gain. Jordan Howard last week had 174 yards rushing against an Iowa defense that was only allowing 86 yards rushing per game coming in. Sudfeld on a sprint down. Out to the 46-yard line, coming back to help out the quarterback again was Mitchell Page. Well, that's really good execution. That third down run was all about Jordan Howard getting to the hole faster than Des Morgan, something you don't see a bunch. And I like moving the pocket, give Michigan different looks. They don't waste any time. Howard again. Looks like he's got another first down for IU. And you know what he does? He falls forward. You'll see that all afternoon long. Very rarely does this 230-pounder get knocked backwards. He's got tremendous forward lane. I think this system, a lot like UAB's, as far as a lot of zone run, and he's very good at getting north and south. Play action. Bullet throw to the sideline. And it's incomplete intended for Simi Cobb. And that's it. That's the picture you're going to see, Simi Cobb. You better get used to it. That's Jeremy Clark, 6'4", 210-pound corner. He's going to get those long arms, those hands on you. He's going to be in your chest plate. And it's going to be up to you to gain some separation. Slants, curls, comebacks, go routes. Got to give your quarterback a chance. Clark number three, or number five rather, in the Big Ten with three interceptions this season. Sudfeld again to throw. Sets up the screen. Devine Redding cannot break the one-on-one -on -one tackle in the open field. Devontae Thomas comes up to make the stop. Play a lot of people defensively for Michigan. Lots of movement, lots of personnel groups. The Wolverines show blitz. Will they back out of it on third down and eight for midfield? Across the board, press man-to-man -man coverage. It's a handoff instead. Up the middle goes Redding, and he's brought down. How aggressive now will Kevin Wilson be? Fourth down and two on the opening drive, and it looks like he's going to leave his offense out there. I love it. Lots of opportunities here to also draw that defense offsides first and foremost. Now it's a look over from Sudfeld. Play to win. I, I say this every week in situations like this. You're playing the top 15 ranked team. Instill some confidence in your crew with this play call. They snap the ball, and they run right into the heart of the Michigan defense and get nothing. A turnover on downs to begin the game as Devon Redding was wrapped up by Joe Bolden. And if you're going to go for it, you better block it. You better block and for the short. And they don't. You see tight end and left tackle both swing and miss and whiff. Can't happen. 
That's Jason Briggs started 43 consecutive games over there at Indiana, the left tackle. He doesn't block anybody. Tight end runs right through Joe Bolden. I love the courage, and I like a lot of the conviction to go for it. But that play a little bit emblematic of some of the plays that just get out of hand for Indiana in critical moments that have led to losses in so many of those close contests. So now a quarterback in Jake Rudock that Jim Harbaugh gushed about when we talked to him earlier this week begins the game with great field position after the turnover on downs. A little wide receiver screen to Darbo. And Amara Darbo is bumped out at midfield. They'll say he's out at the Indiana 48-yard line. That's a gain of about five. Great coaching in college football is show me the tape week one and show me the tape week 10, 11, 13, and let me evaluate the improvement. And you see it across the board. You see it at quarterback more than anywhere else. The body language of Rudock, week 10 here compared to what he was at Utah. Totally different guy. Straight back to throw again. Wide open. Just an easy pitch and catch. Again, it's Jehu Chesson who picks up the first down. And boy, soft coverage gave Chesson all the room in the world to pick up 12 yards. Yeah, those are two gimmies. Those are just simply freebies. And to do that at home, and that's Tyler Green. That's another true freshman corner out there that's being asked to keep everything in front of him. But that is simply too easy. Well, mission accomplished if you're going to run 20 yards off the line of scrimmage and give up a 12-yard out. Maybe on Smith, the eye back. First and 10 for Michigan. Hand off instead to the fullback, Sione Homa. And he picks up a pair. He likes to play the ukulele, and he likes to run people over. Those seem to be his two favorite hobbies. And after missing all of spring ball, an ankle that limited him in training camp, Jim Harbaugh and staff excited about a number of these players. You know, in the NFL, in that NFL adage is, you prove it to me. You show me that you are worthy, and we will give you more opportunities. Sione is showing and gaining that trust with his staff. And now he's the lone setback on second down and eight. Indiana may have been in the neutral zone. This is a free play for Rudock. He'll take a shot at the end zone. Drops it in for the touchdown. J.U. Chesson on a straight go. And Rudock seemed to know that he had a free play. Fall to the play. Touchdown. Third touchdown reception of the season for J.U. Chesson. And a perfectly thrown ball by Jake Rudock. They may go to replay just to make sure that Chesson controlled the ball when he went to the turf. And they will. Called a touchdown on the field. Does he control it all the way through the process of the catch? As he hits the ground there, there is a little bit of ball movement. But does he still maintain possession and control all the way through the action to the ground? Well, doesn't it look like he has his arms wrapped around that football as he rolls to the turf? The ball can make contact with the turf and have it still be a catch. Correct. You have to see whether or not the ball moves in his arms when he hits the ground. If it doesn't, and if they rule that he's got it firmly secured, even if the ball touches the ground, that's still a catch and a touchdown. Do you see anything from any of those replays that would lead you to believe no, you can overturn that call? No, and especially the call? way that it was called on the field is more than likely going to stand. After further review, the ruling on the field stands. Touchdown. So Chesson does indeed have his third touchdown reception of the season, and Michigan has the early lead. And he just keeps getting better and better. And remember, that's the one area that Coach Harbaugh said is Chesson continues to grow in his game, tracking that deep ball. That's still on that checklist to continue to grow and to climb. And J.U. does in a big way here early. And already we see the complimentary football played by Michigan. Their defense does what their defense does. They get the stop on downs at midfield. They give the offense the short field. And Rudock, three for three on the touchdown drive. And transfer from Iowa because he was told by Kirk Ferentz, you're going to be the backup. And it's going to be C.J. Beathard this year for the Hawkeyes. 
He decided to transfer and play for Jim Harbaugh because they had a needed quarterback. And really, Brock, it turns out it's worked out for both teams. Yep. In the first five of the games of this season, he looked like a backup. Over the last three to four weeks, he's looked like the guy that they felt like he would grow into with more time and opportunity. No spring. Right, he was fighting for that job in training camp. It's his, and boy, does he look comfortable. Uh, let's take a look at our good hands play brought to you by Allstate. It begins complimentary football with the defensive line getting the job done on the turnover on downs. And now, Rudock, well, he took the gift that it seemed like Tyler Green, the corner for Indiana, was willing to get. Number one, he sees Indiana on that defensive line jump off sides. He knows he has a freebie, and then he's looking outside at a coverage technique that's telling him this is touchdown and all I got to do is keep it in bounds and that's exactly what he does. Play action for Sudfeld on a slant. Out to about the 35 yard line is Ricky Jones and that looks to be good for a first down. Quickly, let's go down to Shannon. Well, Bob Rock, you know, we heard Kevin Wilson talk this week about body language and about a belief that they can win. Watching this Indiana team come over to the sideline, not a lot of talking, a lot of quietness. Well, this might get them talking. Jordan Howard into the secondary. You don't see that happen in the Michigan defense very often as he picks up 16, two snaps, and the Hoosiers are across midfield. They've had success in their run game when they've gotten a hat on a hat. It was the freebie that they gave them on the fourth down of unblocking a couple of Michigan's best players off the edge. That time, again, a nice job of getting to the second level, getting to Morgan, getting to Bolden. And I'm telling you, you may not know the name Jordan Howard. Not many in college football do with the transfer from UAB. But statistically speaking, he's been one of the real difference makers at that position. He hurt his ankle against Ohio State, missed two and a half games as a result. He's still a top five running back in the Big Ten in yards and touchdowns. There he goes again. And this time the pile moves. That was the offensive line for Indiana doing a pretty good job of changing the line of scrimmage for a four-yard game. Well, a Wolverine fan is going to notice pretty quickly there is no Ryan Glasgow in the middle. He's there, nose tackle, did not make the trip. There's Matt Godin in his place. Play action and maybe some room to run for Sudfeld. He slides. Well short of the first down, it will be third down and three. Playing with tempo, the Hoosiers. They'll try and run for it. And they'll have it. Diving for a first down is Jordan Howard to the 34. A week ago, Iowa came into their matchup with Indiana, giving up about 85 yards a game on the ground. One of the better defenses in college football, much like Michigan. This kid, well, he torched him for a buck 74, a career best as a Hoosier. Now it's a neutral zone infraction for the Wolverines. That looks like it'll give Indiana a free five yards. Offside, defense number 99, five-yard penalty remains, first down. That is Matthew Godin playing in place of Glasgow. And he's played seven games, he's got 14 tackles on the season, but a lot of their four-man front today, a lot of their nickel defense for Michigan, going to try to rotate their defensive linemen through, but no Glasgow is a big, big miss in the middle of their D-line today. This is Devine Redding to the 28-yard line, a gain of one. Taco Charlton made the stop for the Wolverines. Sets up second down and four. Redding again, bouncing outside to the 20-yard line. Into the red zone, down to the 14 for IU. Finally brought down by Jared Wilson. Gain of 14. I think Kevin Wilson and his staff are going to notice here, and they already have, when they've got a numbers count in that box that they feel is appropriate, and no Glasgow, they're going to continue to test the middle of that defensive line. They've run it six straight times on this drive to get down to the 14-yard line. Another handoff, a cutback, maybe a yard, as Devon Redding is brought down by Willie Henry. It's the number one run defense and the number three run defense in America, number one run defense in the Big Ten for Michigan, and they are sixth overall in opponent red zone touchdown percentage, and they're going to make it hard down in this compressed area of the field 
on Indiana as Redding gets to about the 11, sets up third down and seven. Yeah, you can see it just 16 times and just six touchdowns and a good play there by Lewis, the corner. And you're this dominant defensively, it's because everybody in DJ Durkin's system is doing their job. And a great example of that last time, Lewis plays his assignment. He gets on the outside shoulder, he gets on the outside, sets the edge, and allows this fast flow defense to come alive and tackle. Sudfeld looking over with the play clock winding down on third down. Looking end zone, buying time, lost the football, has to jump on top of it. And a flag late. What's the penalty call? Royce Jenkins Stone put some pressure on Sudfeld. Sudfeld lost the football, jumped on top of it, and an Indiana defender or two jumped on top of him. That was when the flag was thrown. It was a fumble on the play, therefore there is no foul for a late hit. Fourth down. That makes sense. Once you lose the football now, you no longer have the protection of the defenseless player as a, a quarterback, right? The ball's loose. That's exactly right. That's nothing malicious. There's no intent. He's doing his job. Everybody's doing his job. More than anything, Jim Harbaugh's crew on defense on third down playing the kind of man-to-man -man coverage that D.J. Durkin loves. Indiana tries to run their little man beater. They're running back out of the backfield. No separation, no room. Big time sack. And now a timeout called on special teams by Michigan from their sideline. So we'll step aside and see if Indiana can get on the board when we return. Lots of selfies on a perfect tailgating day and a great tailgating atmosphere here in the Big Ten at Indiana. Michigan with the 7-0 lead and a red zone stop, as they normally do. Will force a field goal here from Griffin Oaks after the timeout was called by Jim Harbaugh from the sideline. 40 yards away for the former walk-on. So far this season, he is number one in the Big Ten and number 15 in the country at 86%. That one's good, not by much, but it gets inside the left upright. So Indiana is on the board. Michigan holds on to the lead. Bob Schusen, Brock Ewart, and Shannon Spake here in Bloomington. And that was a field goal opportunity because third down kind of came apart for the Hoosiers. Well, Kevin Wilson knows what he's going to get. He is going to get man coverage across the board. Just look at all the Wolverines. You got one place with soft cushion, and then what you love to do versus man coverage is get the running back out, try to get into that matchup. But as you see, there is just nowhere. There is nowhere to throw. Linebackers running with backs out of the backfield. Everybody in the chest plate of Indiana offensively. No opportunity to win. Indiana's going to have to score touchdowns in the red zone. Period. If they're going to pull off this upset, you cannot settle for field goals. And in order to score touchdowns, Bob, against this group, and there have only been four touchdown passes the entire season against them. Say that again. Man. Say that again. Four touchdown passes this season against this defense. And if I'm in meetings this week, I love that call. And Nate Sudfeld's a senior. He plays a role in game planning and game calling and says, hey, hey, let's get Jordan Howard out of the backfield. Let's run a little rub right with our running back on a linebacker. Let's try to find that man-to-man -man matchup that I really like. And you love it on paper, and then you try to go execute, and your guys can't separate. Uh, you throw four touchdown passes in nine games. You're seven and two if you're Michigan, and you're playing just dominant, suffocating defense. Especially in the red zone. This will be a touchback. It'll bring it out to the 25-yard line, and our first opportunity to say hi to Cassidy Hubbard. See, that's one of those scores that at least early on is eye-catching, and yep. you never know. We have all these different scenarios scripted out about how the Big 12 ought to play out, and all you need is one of these undefeated teams to lose a game they're not supposed to, and the whole script comes apart. Yeah, and just look at scripts from previous years and don't ever jump to any conclusions. It's college football never works out the way you think it's going to. Davion Smith. Driving his way out to about the 29-yard line. That's a gain of three and a half to four. Nick Mangieri 
He's had a great career and a super senior season as well for Indiana was there to make the stop. Pretty confident that this front for Indiana can hold their own. They, they did it largely against Ohio State. Elliott, Ezekiel Elliott got loose three times, and that was really the difference. But they are stout. They're veteran guys. They're 300 pounders in the middle next to Mangieri. This game for Indiana is going to be on the perimeter, and can they slow down the big plays? Up the middle, and that's a run stop for IU. Darius Latham brought down Davion Smith. And now you get to the downs and distances that Indiana has to have success on today. Third down and six. Can they play way better than they have so far this season at times defensively and get off the field? And can they rush with four? Because to blitz and to play man to man, you've already seen it with Chesson. You just do not match up well out at the corner position. So your front four has to be incredibly effective impacting the pocket. 110th in FBS and opponent's third down percentage. The Indiana defense. Here's Rudock, well protected. And that might be a drop. Rashard Fant was there in coverage on Chesson, and it seemed to go through his hands. So it is a rare third down stop for Indiana in a big spot, but they get it. We'd like to see Chesson come back and help his quarterback just a little bit here. He's running a little pivot route, and you see the feet get stuck in the ground just a little bit. Gives Fant the most veteran and experienced corner on the field for the Hoosiers an opportunity to close that cushion and come back. We'd love for Chesson to continue to get in and out of that break even quicker. Blake O'Neal angles a punt. Mitchell Page from the 26. Gets a block. A flag down and a couple thrown as he gets to the 26-yard line. And we have an injured player for Michigan down as well. I think, unfortunately, his own buddy ran into him and cut him off at the legs. Looks like DeMonte Thomas who was down on the ground for Michigan. And Joe and Carriage it. blocked into him, unfortunately. That should be the block in the back here. Carriage gets blocked into Thomas. They're looking at his right knee. DeMonte Thomas is in that group at safety in the rotations, already played. A handful of snaps for Michigan defensively today to begin the game. You can see Carriage gets hit right during in the, the back. return. Holding, receiving team number one. That penalty is declined. Illegal block in the back. Receiving team number 21. Ten yard penalty. First down. Timeout. So the block in the back will cost Michigan field position, and it hurts one of their safeties as well as we step aside. Oh, whatever. Thomas still having that left knee looked at over on the sideline by the Michigan training staff. A 45-yard punt, lost five on the return, did Indiana, plus a 10-yard penalty. So that is a 60-yard change in field position back to their own 11-yard line as they open up with Jordan Howard as the lone setback. Although they have run the ball against Michigan here in the first quarter pretty effectively. And they'll try it on the ground here. They've got a lane again. It's a five-yard gain. Now to about the 11, rather the 16-yard line. Joe Bolden made the stop. Let's go down to Shannon. 
Well, guys, Michigan defensive line coach Greg Madison talking to his guys during that last uh, possession when they were on the sideline. Tell them they got to be tougher. You know, Greg, Greg Madison told me before the game started this will be the toughest offense for us to try to get you off rhythm. Well, they are a team that can load up yards. And how about this run by Jordan Howard? Dragging tacklers out close to the 25-yard line for a first down. Well, there's a couple things they do. They're committed to it. And Howard's now over 1,000 yards rushing on the season. You've got a bunch of linemen that have played a lot of ball together. And right now, they are winning that initial point of attack. They're pushing Hurst around and Wormley around. No Glasgow and getting quite a bit of movement at the point. Again, it's a Michigan defense that is number one in the Big Ten, number three in America, allowing only 81 yards on the ground per game. There's another first down and a gain of 11, though, for Jordan Howard. Six one two thirty, and boy, does he run behind his pads. And as you can see right now, not even through the first 15 minutes here, Right up against that average that Michigan gives for an entire game. Play action for Sudfeld. Has all day to throw. Long throw outside the numbers to the 41-yard line for a gain of six to Mitchell Page. So Michigan was concerned with a veteran quarterback. You know, the Greg Madison has been around a lot of ball on that defensive line, the tempo and how that would affect. They played tempo teams. But right now, it's about winning those blocks and getting off the blocks. There's a true freshman, Mike Majette. That's a strong run. He worked hard for a couple of yards, about a yard shy of the first down. And again, that was the 24th offensive play so far for Indiana. 18 of their first 24 plays on the ground. And you think about Nate Sudfeld being number one in the Big Ten in passing yards per game. And they can certainly throw it. But they have been run heavy with Kevin Johns dialing up a ground attack. Does that surprise you at all against the number nope. one rush nope. defense in the Big Ten? No, nope, it's all numbers. No, if they're going to give us the numbers between the tackles, then we need to win. And we need to get that push and feel confident in our veteran offensive line and our 230-pound battering ram to get it done. Now can you get it done on third down? They'll try and throw for it. Sudfeld takes a shot downfield, and he throws it behind Ricky Jones. <laughs> Fourth down and a yard at the 44-yard line. And Indiana not sending the punt group out yet. They're 4-5 and five overall. They are 0-5 in the Big Ten. And they're going to go for it on their side of the 50, it looks like, on fourth down and a yard. Let's see if they snap the ball. Jordan Howard in the backfield. They clock at 10. Play clock down to 5. They do snap it. And they'll try and run for it. And they're going to get it. Jordan Howard to midfield. Boy, it's amazing when you block that edge defender. You didn't do it on the first fourth and two, but you decide to on the fourth and one. And this time you get a hat on a hat. And you can see the movement there with Joe Bolden. And you let Howard get started. This kid can run. Sudfeld down the sideline. Coming back to try and make an adjustment to the ball with Simi Cobbs. He's looking for a flag. Nothing comes out. And there is the super safety. Jabril Peppers back covering a man for man. Pretty good separation. And there are times that I think Nate leans on that back shoulder throw just a little bit too much. You cannot go into that throw thinking I'm going to throw it. You have got to see what the defense is doing. And that time, Cobbs actually gets a step on Peppers. He needed to put that one and pepper it down the field. Instead, Jabril is able to close. We'll see if Jabril Peppers shows up offensively at some point for Michigan. But their defense on the field for a lot of snaps here in the first quarter. A little tunnel screen that goes right through the hands of Damon Graham. So that's a mistake. And now it's third down and 10. The 29th snap for Indiana here in the first quarter. Michigan has run seven offensive plays, but they've got the lead. And that first down pass and shot and second down tunnel screen puts you in third and ten, and you're looking right at two-man coverage. Two safeties deep, man-to-man -man underneath. There's a throw underneath. Reaching back to make the catch. 
is Devon Redding. And now you're back in that fourth down decision-making situation again. Check that Majette made the catch. Now it's fourth down and a solid two and a half. But what, now you're what, in plus territory. Hold on. What, what decision-making? <laughs> There's no decision to be made. Three fourth downs. We go for it three times. Well, this isn't fourth down and a half yard. This isn't even fourth down and two. This is fourth down and close to three. Keep this defense on the field for as many snaps as you can. They've lost two starters already. You've got to try to wear them down. They almost get Michigan to jump. Play clock at 10. The true freshman Majette in the backfield with the play clock at 3. They're going to have to call timeout. And that will be done from the sideline by Kevin Wilson. We're back in 30 seconds for another fourth down try. Baker Mayfield, the opportunity of a lifetime. This is why he transferred to Oklahoma for nights like tonight. After the Indiana timeout, they swap out the true freshman Mike Majet for Jordan Howard again. At tailback, going for it on fourth down for the third time in the opening quarter. They're one for one, and they'll try and run for it. It's Sudfeld on a keeper. He's got it at the 40-yard line. Guess it doesn't take much if you're 6'6", 240, just fall forward and you pick up two yards. And I guess the other thing you've got to consider in these fourth down conversions is you know exactly what you're going to get defensively. Sudfeld to the sideline. He's got Cobbs to the 23-yard line. That's another first down for IU in a gain of 17. And that's on Channing Stripling in the game playing that field corner that is a long throw that's why those NFL scouts are here they're watching a 20-yard comeback across the field from the college hash mark good accuracy Jordan Howard back into the red zone a gain of five again only coming into today for Michigan 16 opponent red zone trips this season and six touchdowns allowed so they allow a little less than two red zone trips per game this is the second time that Indiana has been in the red zone here in the first quarter. The 14th play of this drop. This might be a free play. And going to the end zone is Sudfeld. Jump ball. It's intercepted, but it looked as if Michigan was offsides at the snap. Jordan Lewis got the pick. But this should go in favor of IU. Offside. Defense number 99. Under the neutral zone. Five-yard penalty, repeat, second down. And that's Godin. He's right in the middle of the line. And I told you four times, but he's replacing the toughest and best Wolverine on that line of scrimmage. Ryan Glasgow did not make the trip here to Bloomington. And Godin's used to playing, but not the significant starter snaps he's getting today. That penalty gives Indiana a first down. So first and 10 at the 13. And it's Devon Redding back in as the tailback. Redding to about the 10-yard line. Offensive coordinator Kevin Johns told us a couple things yesterday that really stick out to me in watching his plan in 15 minutes. He said Minnesota ran at Michigan because they were committed to it. You can't go halfway when you're playing a tremendous opponent. You have got to go all in with your game plan. And secondly, their game plan was to be aggressive. Four down territory from their own 40-yard line today. I love it. Sudfeld with a play fake. And now sees that Redding is covered and lives to fight another day. Now it's third down and seven at the 10. Taco Charlton had that one diagnosed. That's a smart play, and that's a veteran quarterback. And that's what Nate has shown on film is he avoids the catastrophic plays. Rock, you said this would be the game. Can Indiana score touchdowns in the red zone? Can they keep this drive alive in the red zone? The 16th play, and it's third and seven. This might be a timeout. No, it's a flag. False start. Offense, number 77. Five-yard penalty. Remains third down. It looked as if Kevin Wilson was hopping down the sideline trying to call a timeout. And that's your right tackle there, Camille. Camille, excuse me, the redshirt junior. And they're under 
Center there for quite some time, trying to get the right call, the right protection. He starts leaning, and you're going to get it. Unfortunately, with yeah, he was dead pounds. <laughs> he was kind of giving it that, oh, no, as he's falling backwards a little bit. Well, here's the third down play. Another flag down. That's going to be the inside slot receiver. It's another false start. False start. Offense number four. Five-yard penalty remains. Third down. At the time, it's Ricky Jones. They call him Grandpa. He's the veteran receiver in this crew, and I like it. They're moving him around. He's in the inside of that trips formation. I think he knows that he's going to be the target here. Trying to get a head start, but once again, hurting yourself. A group that's given up four touchdown passes on the entire season, and now you're looking at third and 20. They can get a first down inside the three, but now they're all the way back to the 20-yard line. And it looks like they'll just run, try and set up a little bit more real estate for the field goal as Redding gets to the 18-yard line. And it will be Griffin Oaks most likely to start the second quarter. And another flag was thrown on the near side of the field. That seemed to be after the play was over. Simi Cobbs and Channing Stribling had to be After separated. After the play was over, there were unsportsmanlike conduct fouls against both teams. Unsportsmanlike conduct, defense number eight. Unsportsmanlike conduct, offense number one. This foul's offset. That was the first unsportsmanlike conduct foul on both players. That was Cobbs and Stribling, and they got tangled well after the play was over, right up against the Michigan sideline. On the opposite side of the field from where Redding was tackled, and so now it looks like Indiana will most likely let the clock wind down to the end of the first quarter. So it's two trips to the red zone here in the first quarter for Indiana, but it looks like they'll start off the second quarter with another field goal. Indiana ran up as if they were going to snap the ball, and Michigan calls a timeout with one second to go in the quarter. It certainly seemed like it was football 101. Brock, I think a no-brainer to let the clock wind down and simply kick a field goal but at least bluffing if you're Indiana as if you're going to run a play spooked the Michigan sideline and they call the timeout yeah, there's not really any tremendous win it's breezy it's not nearly as blustery as it was here yesterday so this isn't about trying to just keep them in one particular end zone to kick a field we got the third you know, an opportunity here you're not going for it on fourth and 15 from the 18 yard line it seems like a no-brainer you will kick a field goal but now Indiana will have to kick the field goal as the last play of the first quarter. Let's take a look at Kevin Wilson over on the sideline. As the clock is winding down, now he sends a signal to his quarterback. He, he wanted them all of a sudden to get back up to the line and well, see if he could maybe spook the Wolverines, and I guess it worked. He wanted to kick it into this end zone. So it's a 36 yard field goal attempt for Oaks, who's one for one. And he's now two for two. So that takes us to the end of the first quarter, and now it's a one point game. 7 6, Michigan has the lead over Indiana. We'll be back after this message and a word from our local ABC stations. one at the end of this first half that little coaching that little you better be on point with every second of this game Kevin Wilson his veteran quarterback forced the timeout there from the Wolverines now in the end they weren't going to go for it on fourth and 15 from unless the 20 yard line cover, unless that DB does not go out there the safety is falling asleep but at the very least it keeps the opposition on their toes and force them to use a timeout just to make sure so they end up kicking the field goal but Michigan has now spent two timeouts here yep in the first half. Let's go back to Cassidy. Oh, 
Now right here in Indiana, it's a one-point lead for Michigan. And the Wolverines about to run only their eighth offensive play of the game. They had the short field, scored a touchdown on their first possession, and then Indiana got them stopped on their second possession. And Indiana had 35 plays and nearly 12 minutes of possession time in that first quarter. Play action for Rudolph. Swings it right. Flag down. Finds Joe Carriage, but the flag thrown in the offensive backfield. That may be a chop block. Personal foul, shot block, offense from 78 and number four. Penalized half the distance to the goal. Repeat, first down. It's Davion Smith and right tackle Eric Magnuson, and you can see here right on the edge, Magnuson is engaged, and he is trying to let up at that last moment. But not quite good enough in a penalty in a big one that sets the Wolverines back. We talked to Jim Harbaugh this week about how important this game was, the rest of the season, how it might play out. Said, I'm just trying to get 99 and 98 blocked. Here's Ruda under pressure. Checks it down, not much there. Jake Butt brought down well behind the line. So a penalty and a tackle for loss all the way back to about the six. It's a loss of seven as Zach Shaw got the pressure on Ruda. Backwards going. Michigan's offense, it'll be second down at 29. Well, that was a good play by Tyler Green that time. He gives up the early freebies, but that time the freshman corners got coverage on Butt, the tight end, trying to set up the tight end screen, but he never lets Butt get loose. The lineman can't get out in front and another negative play. What a chance for the Indiana defense if they can get a stop to flip field position. Rudock from the end zone. Long throw up the seam, and look who climbs the ladder to make the catch at the 30. It's the tight end, Jake Butt, and that is only about five yards shy of a first down. He picks up 24. Uh, we know the difference makers at tight ends are at the next level, that Gronk and Jimmy Graham and those guys can be, and that's big time for Butt. He climbs the ladder there. He's 6'6". He's the second leading receiver, and you can see the amount of confidence Rudock has in him. It's some tight zone coverage. He's going to put it where his guy gets it or nobody gets it. What a great second down play for Michigan. They go from second down and close to 30 to third down and five. Rudock straight back. This time he'll run. No one home for Indiana. The fifth year senior sees the opportunity and takes advantage all the way to the IU 47 yard line, a gain of 23. Tyler Green helped out on the stop by Marcus Oliver, who's slow to get up. He's not making this play the first half of the season. The reason is he's going to go through all of his reads, and he's still trying to learn the system inside and out. Now, he's got a down pat. Number one, number two is not there. He sees the zone coverage. Everybody drop deep. He's the second leading touchdown maker on the ground for the Wolverines. Four of them deadly in the red zone, but that time on third down. That's his longest run of the year. Now a toss to Drake Johnson. Flag down. Johnson turns the corner and gets tripped up. That's a pretty good tackle out on the edge by the true freshman safety, Jonathan Crawford. Limited it to a gain of three, but we'll have to check the marker. Attention to detail again. That's going to be A.J. Williams, the motion tight end there. He's coming to crack back, and I think he is leaning towards the line of scrimmage. He's going to draw the penalty. Illegal shift. Offense. Two men moving prior to the snap and did not reset. Five-yard penalty. Repeat first down. Got to be on point. When you go on the road, no matter who you are playing, and they're 0-5 in conference, you better flush that out of your mind if you're Michigan, and you got to pay attention to all of the littlest of details. Still, though, think about where the ball was only a couple of snaps ago. You had second down at 29, back at your own five-yard line, and two snaps later, you're in plus territory. It's a terrific job by the Wolverine offense. Little smoke screen out to the edge to Chesson. Tripped up at midfield. Richard Fent came up to make the tackle at a good one, one-on-one -on -one against J.U. Chesson. Well, that's a really nice play. He actually gets knocked down on this play. And Michigan's doing a much better job as this season also evolves of getting Chesson and Darbo. And you will see at some point Peppers getting the ball out on the perimeter. Fent gets blocked, does not quit, does not give up. He's a little guy, 5'10", buck 70, but he is feisty.
Jabril Peppers now on the field. And he is a difference maker when he gets it in the open field. They sneak Jabril Peppers into the personnel package. And the safety catches the screen and gains 18. I was watching practice yesterday. And like most teams and defenses, when you have got a difference maker with the kind of speed the Peppers does, he comes on the field in a different jersey. And everybody has got to point him out on that Indiana defense. You have got to know where he is going to line up because he is by far the fastest Wolverine with the ball in his hands. And he will stay out there as the wide receiver to the near side bottom of your screen. Looks like Rudolph wants to head that direction again. Now it's a little throwback screen. And this one is diagnosed but is brought down almost immediately by Zach Shaw. That's a loss back to the 42-yard line of 10. And that's an even better play than Tyler Green made on that tight end screen because Zach Shaw actually started to rush the passer there and just felt that screen coming. You've got to do a wonderful job of selling it offensively. Tight end, offensive lineman, even quarterback. And that time, Zach Shaw able to sniff it out. Last moment of time. Earlier on this drive, negative plays. I use defense couldn't capitalize. Can they can they now? Right up the middle goes the battering ram. Sioni Homa to the 35-yard line, but it will be third down and long. And tonight on ESPN, another great game for you. Number nine LSU looking to bounce back against a red hot Arkansas team. That's one three in a row. Our coverage begins at 7.15 Eastern on ESPN, presented by Hilton Hotels. Also streaming live on Watch ESPN. So you've got the worst third down defense in America setting up third down and 13. Can Indiana get a stop? They bring a blitz. It's picked up. Rudock under pressure. Again, there's no one home. Rudock with plenty of room to run to the sideline and pick up another third down conversion, a 19-yard scramble. This is one of the differences between an Nate Sudfeld on the other side and a Jake Rudock as this season has evolved. And you called it right from the snap. You could see that double A-gap linebacker blitz. They don't get home. You give Rudock a crease, and he is going to make you pay. He's not a 4-4 guy, right? but he's probably a 4-7, 40 guy. He's very athletic, and he is, as I said, gotten so much more comfortable in this scheme of knowing right and when to go places with the football. And if it's out there, to be able to do just what he did there. Again, tuck it and run. Now it's Drake Johnson. A yard to the 15-yard line. It'll be second down. And you think now about this Michigan team, Brock, how their defense has evolved this season, how good that group is, and how Rudolph, granted, he's a fifth-year grad senior transfer, but he was a first-year starter for Michigan back when they lost to Utah at the beginning of the season. And that miraculous finish, or heartbreaking finish, if you're a Michigan fan to Michigan State, it's the only loss since week one for this group. They got the quarterback playing at the level he's at. Who wants to play Michigan? at this point as we come down the stretch. Play action. Ruda, long throw, wide open in the end zone is Chesson. He's got it again. Another Wolverine touchdown. Chesson, touchdown Michigan. Pretty good drive for Mr. Rudolph. Six for six on that drive, now nine of ten on the game, and that's another freebie. The first go-round touchdown was pretty easy. That one was even easier. Yet again, another bust in coverage. Indiana miscommunicates. They pass off Chesson. Nobody is there to defend him. I think Rudolph taking some of that stinger away with his scrambles and then finishing when Indiana makes the cardinal mistake. Second touchdown catch for J.U. Chesson. A 10-play, 75-yard drive and a blown coverage that costs Indiana seven. He was two years old. His parents fled Liberia for the Ivory Coast. When he was five, they moved to the U.S., settled in St. Louis. He found American football, became a star, and found his way to Ann Arbor. And he's becoming a star wide receiver this season for the Wolverines. Indiana respond. Mike Majek will take a knee. We'll find out. IU back to the offense, down by eight when we come back. The fact that we have a chance to enjoy a college football game today, and it's hard to think that we do, knowing that what happened in Paris has captivated the world's attention as well. 
Here's Sudfeld to throw on first down. And he will find Ricky Jones on a slant. And he's all the way out to about the 46-yard line. But, boy, it's tough pictures and tough accounts to listen to. And certainly we here in the U.S., I live in the New York area, we have been attacked. We know what those emotions are like and all our thoughts and prayers to everyone in Paris as we will continue to hope for the best. Indiana out to their own 46-yard line facing second down and 10. Bottled up behind the line is Jordan Howard. He loses a couple. It'll be third down and long after we check in with Shannon. Well, uh, Indiana offensive coordinator Kevin Johns told his guys, play alert. Be aware of everything that's going on. And about those unsportsmanlike conduct, I don't care who pushes who first. Don't play down to that. Well, a 15-yard penalty at any point in this game could be something that completely changes the game. And the coaches obviously want the players to understand that. Third and 12. Here comes the Michigan Blitz. Sudfeld. Can't beat it. Michael Cooper, the intended receiver, but a very late flag is thrown. Jared Wilson was there in coverage. And it seemed as if it was well after the play was broken up by Wilson that the flag came out. Pass interference. Defense number 22. The ball replaced at the spot of the foul. Automatic first down. And it's that contact before the ball gets there. And you can see Wilson with his left arm is just grabbing the back side of that tight end. Cooper, and that, that judgment call from that official is, did that impede Cooper's ability to get to the football? And I would say yes. And, and if it does, you are going to, especially when you're exposed in the open field like that, you're going to draw that penalty. So a big penalty and a first down across the 50 for Indiana. Delayed handoff to Howard, gets to the second level, and jukes his way down to about the 30-yard line as we check it again with Cassidy. Now we're going to try to make contact with Cassidy when we can for an update, as once again it's Jordan Howard with a flag down, off right guard for a couple of yards. Holding, offense, number 50, 10 yard penalty, repeat, first down. That's the center, Jake Reed. And he just gets beat there. One of the rare occasions that Maurice Hurst, the defensive tackle, is actually winning. Jordan Howard is running once again like he did against Iowa a week ago. He's got 88 yards on the ground already in this first half. And a lot of it is because his guys up front are getting a hat on a hat, and then he's making the difference. He's beating Joe Bolton. He's beating Des Morgan. He's getting to the second level. A pump fake. Sudfeld. He's got man-to-man -man coverage down the sideline. And he drops it in perfectly. Andre Booker with a flag down. Makes the catch. Let's see where they mark him out. Inside the 10-yard line at about the 9. A flag down as well. If the play stands, it's 32 yards on the game. Looks like it's coming back. Pass interference. Offense, number 31. 15-yard penalty. Repeat, first down. Boy, what a huge call. Yeah, and I don't like this call. You're going to allow these guys to play some ball, and you can see Clark immediately, and he's getting his hands, and they're fighting. They're hand fighting. And that's what you are going to get. Michigan is going to come up, and Clark in particular with his size and length is going to challenge you. And if he's got his hands on you, then as a receiver, you've got to have the opportunity to fight those hands off. He's not pushing away. He didn't gain separation by, by extending his arms and pushing Clark off him. He's hand fighting. And if both guys are doing it, boy, that's a debilitating call to me. So instead of first and goal from inside the 10-yard line, this puts Indiana back on their own side of the 50. First and 35, back to their own 44-yard line. Back-to-back -back penalties really hurting Indiana. Sudfeld doesn't have to get it all in one play, and he'll check it down to Andre Booker, and that will get IU back across midfield. That's a gain of only seven. Joe Bolden made the tackle. 
Yeah, that's too bad. That, that is a huge swing in field position. As I said, if you are going to let that defensive back get his hands and he is going to fight and tug, then you've got to give the receiver the same opportunity. Long throw to the sideline, and now it's manageable. Booker toe taps out of bounds at about the 34-yard line. A gain of 15, now it's third and 13. Once again, you're seeing why these NFL GMs even are here today. This kid makes NFL throws. Goes quickly, here comes a blitz, it's picked up. He'll take a shot again towards the end zone. Same guy laying out, it's Booker, but he can't haul it in. So now it's fourth down and 13. This is an awfully long field goal attempt as we take another look. And once again, the hand fighting. I mean, once again, he's trying to grab his arm, and Booker is doing what he can to try to distance and separate himself. Yeah, that was a, that was a really difficult call against the Hoosiers, something they're going to need today. So here's Griffin Oaks to try another field goal. This one from a long way away, though. This is just over 51 yards. Now, against Maryland last year, he made a 58-yarder. That is his career long. This one from just inside 52. That looks pretty good. That is good. Maybe some of those NFL scouts might want to take a trip over to the kicker's locker and talk to him. Griffin Oaks is three for three. That was a... with only two field goals. They seemingly had a completion down to the nine yard line called back on an offensive pass interference call that forces them to kick a third field goal. So Michigan's got a couple of sevens, Indiana's only getting threes. And as a result, they trail. Through the back of the end zone on the kickoff. So now it's time to take a look at who's been putting in work. Brought to you by Carhartt, it was Jake Rudock and all the weapons he has at his disposal putting in work on that last Michigan drive. And the big completion of Jake there on second and 29, Rudock showing you that you cover it up and you don't maintain your proper rush alleys. He'll make you pay with his legs. Pepper's the fastest player on this field and then a busted coverage from Indiana. It's got to make it difficult. When coaches say we've got to play sound, fundamental defensive football, you can't bust coverage. You can't have terrible technique because Rudock, a fifth-year player with 34 starts under his belt, will make you pay. And now starting at their own 25-yard line, eye formation with Davion Smith, the eye back. He takes the handoff, spins off a tackler, and gets to the secondary all the way to the 40-yard line. Looked like they had him bottled up at the line of scrimmage, and instead he picks up 16 as... Darius Latham couldn't bring him down. And those two interior defensive linemen were going to be so critical where my eyes have been in this first half is you've got to control it. And they've done a pretty good job to this point in the run game. You've got to get in effect Jake Rudock with a four-man rush and better maintain your pass rush lanes. And that time Smith running right through the tackle. Looked like a false start might have forced Indiana to jump. Ball start, offense, number 67, five-yard penalty, remains first down. So Kyle Kalis picks up the sixth Michigan penalty. And they were working on Kyle during the Indiana drive there, working on the shoulder and back on the field. Three redshirt juniors going to get a ton and have gotten a ton of experience on this line. It's going to be a battle-tested crew next season for a new quarterback under center. Five and a half minutes to go before halftime. First and 15, play action for Ruda. Steps up, looks over the middle, he's got Chesson running free! J.U. Chesson to the pylon! And into the end zone for another touchdown! Is this J.U. Chesson or Braylon Edwards out there for Michigan? Well, this isn't a busted coverage. This is pretty sound football, but a perfectly anticipated throw will bust open even sound defenses. And if Utah is watching this thing tonight, they're saying, I don't know who this quarterback is. He didn't play against us week number one. I mean, this Jake Rudock kid got good against Minnesota. He got great against Rutgers, and he can't play the position any better and he's done here in the first half today. He has been flawless. He had a 99 QBR in their win over Rutgers. He might be on his way to another number like that. The way Michigan's piling up yards here in the first half.
deep dig route here. And what I want you to watch is when this ball is thrown, right? Look at the anticipation. He is throwing to a window. The backside safety can't get there. That ball is out of his hands, Rudock's hands, before Chesson is even in that spot. And look at the finish. Because of the anticipation, you beat the corner, you beat the safety. And a third touchdown reception on one heck of a first half between quarterback and wide receiver. Damon Graham took a knuckleball kickoff at about the five-yard line and got it out to the 25. Time now to answer our Aflac trivia question. Aflac! Michigan has played 136 seasons of college football. The only FBS school that has played more on the banks of the old Raritan. Rutgers for 146 seasons. I'm going to go back and find some different seasons of defense than the one that we watched on film this week when we saw them play against both Indiana and Michigan. Now plenty of time, plenty of time for Sudfeld before halftime. They could keep it on the ground, and they will. Look at Jordan Howard bouncing it close to a first down. A gain of nine and a half just shy of the 35-yard line as Indiana has two timeouts. And five minutes on the clock. And how badly did they need a touchdown before halftime as they have gotten to the red zone twice, kicked a couple of field goals, and had another red zone trip called back by penalty. Had to settle for a third field goal. Nice ball fake by Sudfeld. Wide open in the flat, Michael Cooper. That's a first down. But I love the commitment. I love the commitment of Kevin Johns, coordinator Kevin Wilson, head coach, to continue to do what? To run the football. Howard's got 97 yards rushing in this first half already. 97 against this Michigan team that gives up a game 80 yards. So the conviction to do it, that sets up everything else for the Hoosiers. Sudfeld off a play action fake. Lobs it down the sideline. And it is intercepted. Perfect underneath coverage on Ricky Jones by Jordan Lewis. He picks it off. And just like that, Michigan's got the ball back. Third interception this season for Jordan Lewis. Well, this is why the Wolverines are 4-1 and one in Indiana right now, searching for their first conference win, and they're going to have to take another look at that. Well, that ball came loose as Lewis was on his way down. That may have hit the turf. This might go back to Indiana. Yeah, unlike Chesson's reception earlier through the process of the ground where he controlled the ball, that time you see the ball... And I think Lewis knows it. You can always read a player, right? I think oftentimes he'll give you a little tell of knowing whether or not they pulled that thing in. I think his body language said, yeah, I knocked it down, but I didn't finish. And knocking it down is what he's done. 20 now. Yep. yep. Even if this turns out to not be an interception, that is still 20 passes broken up this season by Jordan Lewis. That is number one in FBS. And he's mad if he doesn't get the matchup. And he's going up against Ricky Jones, the most experienced and leading receiver for Indiana. And DJ Durkin said, he looks at me. He looks funny at me if we have an alignment, a personnel group where he's not on the number one guy. He wants to take away the number one weapon, and he's done so today. That seemed about as clear a look as you would need to see that that's an incomplete pass. So Indiana should get the ball back. And another chance before halftime to try and get in the end zone. You know, you can look at Rudock on the other side and give a lot of praise to Jed Fish and Jim Harbaugh, and you should. They're deserving of it to see his growth and evolution. But on this defensive side, to watch Jordan Lewis and Jabril Peppers, to watch Jeremy Clark, who was a safety for the Wolverines last year, grow in their man-to-man -man coverage, a real testament to the coaching on that side as well. After further review, it was an incomplete pass. Indiana's ball, second ten on the 42-yard line. This Please is set the game clock to four minutes and 24 seconds. This is four a lot of Will Muschamp. This is a lot of Will Muschamp, Florida Gator defense. DJ Durkin helped coordinate down there in Gainesville. All right, this isn't some of the old Michigan defense where I'm going to play a lot of quarter coverage, a lot of zone coverage, and they were good a year ago. 22 points a game, about 320 yards. But they're dominant this year, and they're dominant because they are coming up and they are testing your will playing man-to-man -man coverage. And that was what you noticed schematically and attitude-wise, right? It's the same personnel for the most part, but they've cut the offense's production in half from last year to this year. Sudfeld on second and ten. Underneath to Ricky Jones. A little extra on the way out of bounds near midfield. Delano Hill was there to make the stop. It's a gain of seven. 
And this is a big one. This is where you've got to continue to possess the ball if you're Indiana. Your defense right now does not have an answer for Rudock and Chesson, and you have got to maintain possession. Indiana only two for eight on third down. Sudfeld. That's going to be short, even if it's caught. So now it's going to be fourth down and three. Now three different times here in the first half. In this type of a situation, even on their own side of the 50, they've gone for it on fourth down. And it looks like, without hesitation, Kevin Wilson says, go for it again. Play clock winding down to eight. Sudfeld still looking over. Play clock at five. Looks like they'll have to call a timeout. So we'll step aside as well for just a moment. Big fourth down coming up. Another big college football Saturday and a chance to put one up on the big screen, another on your computer, on your tablet, your smartphone as well. Just use Watch ESPN. Download the app or go to watchespn.com. So after the timeout, thinking better of it, Kevin Wilson now puts his punt group out there. Michigan looks like they're playing safe, guarding against a fake. As Eric Toth will kick it deep, try and keep it away from Jabril Peppers. Peppers will let it bounce. And it will take pretty good Michigan hop, I guess, out towards the 16-yard line. Let's take a look at today's AT&T strong performance. We have to go back a ways to find it. Back to 1987. That's the last time that Indiana was able to get a victory here in Bloomington over Michigan. 14-10. Indiana came away with the win. Both teams at the time were ranked in the top 20. And not long after that, apparently color photography was invented. <laughs> it's been that long, though, since Indiana has found a way to win a game in this series. They are 9-54 and 54 all time against Michigan. They have lost 19 in a row. This time getting stops at the line was Davion Smith. Marcus Oliver made the tackle. Indiana put up a bunch of yards in the first quarter, but kicked field goals. Michigan with big plays in the second quarter. They've scored touchdowns. That's what good teams do. That's what teams that win Big Ten conferences do. And, and you continue to grow in your game. You continue to get more and more confident within what you're doing in your game plan, and that is what oozes out of Rudock. Rudock to throw on second down. Checks it down underneath to Smith. And he's brought down. Now here's a chance for Indiana before halftime. You wonder if they might think about using a timeout here. They've got two timeouts left. Or check that one left. Down to three minutes to go. So you don't call it here. It's third down and about eight. And that's a great shot right there from Kevin Wilson that is just really trying to reinforce to his defense. I punted here. I'm going to give you an opportunity to pay it off. Help, help me pay off that decision to give you guys an opportunity to change field position. And here it is. And you better contain Rudolph because he has been most dangerous on these third downs of getting loose and beating you with his legs. Third down and eight. Four-man rush. Rudolph well protected. Fires a strike, but it's short of the first down marker. But a flag is thrown. The catch made by the freshman Grant Perry. Chase Dutra was there on the stop. It's an ineligible man downfield penalty, and it'll be declined by Indiana. Ineligible receiver downfield. 
offense. Number 88 was covered up and went downfield. That penalty's declined, brings up fourth down. So the defense does the job for IU. Yep. And plenty of time. They're up tempo system. Two minutes, timeout, all the time in the world for Indiana. Michigan, remember, deferred. They will get the ball to start the second half. So extra critical here for Indiana to try to find a way to get points going into halftime. So Blake O'Neill will kick it away from about the 10-yard line. End over end kick. Mitchell Page calls for a fair catch. And it will be good field position. IU just shy of their own 40-yard line after only a 37-yard kick. Week 10 is upon us in the NFL. We have you covered tomorrow morning. Get ready for all the games with NFL Insider Sunday Edition beginning at 10, and then Countdown follows at 11. After the hit to Teddy Bridgewater's hit last week, the guys will debate whether all quarterbacks are treated equally. What do you think, Brock? You, no. you were once a quarterback no. in that league. You don't think you were treated quite as well as the guy you backed up in Indy? No, because I was a slappy. <laughs> <laughs> and you can hit me as hard as you want, but don't hit Tom Brady. Or Peyton Manning. Uh, you got to earn it. It's a shame that that reputation is carried over for you to the broadcast booth as well. <laughs> Just ask our crew. <laughs> Divine Redding is the tailback. Still a timeout for Indiana. Plenty of time on the clock. They keep it on the ground. There goes Redding. Down the sideline. Out of bounds at the 40-yard line. This ground attack has been solid for Indiana here in the first half. 21 more yards. Well, there's two things. Number one, they're reaching their blocks well. And number two, Bolden and Morgan, who have been so dominant at that linebacker level of meeting that play in the hole, have not been so in this first half. The sophomore from Youngstown breaking more tackles, but a flag down. Holding. Offense number 77, 10-yard penalty, repeat, first down. And that's a big right tackle again. We saw Camille earlier leaning at 6'7", 310, and this time he is just reaching on Willie Henry. He is coming down here, right tackle, and he's trying to seal it. And unfortunately, Willie does a nice job here of getting his hands free, and all Camille could do was reach and grab and hold. So now it's first and 20 back to midfield. Clock rolls again with 150 to go in the half. Sudfeld letting time come off the clock down to 142 to go. On the slant, he's got Simi Cobbs. That's first down inside the 30 yard line to the 29. A gain of 21 on first and 20. Well, that is a rarity. That is zone coverage, and that's a credit to Nate Sudfeld right now to keep his poise. And you don't see Michigan play a ton of zone, and maybe that's why Pepper's a little bit lost in space. The slant comes right off his ear. Up the middle for Jordan Howard, who's over 100 yards here in the first half. No team this season has run against Michigan's defense for more yards than Indiana has run against them in the first half today. Sudfeld on the move. Bullets a throw to the sideline. But in between two receivers may have been intended for Ricky Jones. And that brings up third down and eight. And you can see it right there. You saw a little bit of the body language. He knows he had an open receiver there underneath. And when you play this crew, you just can't get off schedule. These third and tens, these third and eights become really difficult, A, to get the time and protection, and then B, to win on your routes down the field. Michigan shows blitz. Here they come on third down. Sudfeld, back shoulder throw to the sideline. It's good for a first down. The true freshman, Nick Westbrook, only his fourth catch of the season, and it's a huge one. Puts them at the 12-yard line. That's fighting through some of that contact. That is really well done from Westbrook. Just three catches coming into this game, and he's going up against the best corner and gets it done. Sudfeld lobs it for Westbrook through his hands. Going against the best corner guy and cover guy that Michigan has, Jordan Lewis, lobbing it to a true freshman. I think you're seeing here in this first half of play why Indiana played with Ohio State to the end, why they took Michigan State five-point game on the road with five minutes to go, why they had Iowa in a one-possession game. They will not back down. Now, they've got to do something about this. They have got to find a way to get sevens in the red zone. 
Two trips in the first quarter, two field goals. Another trip thwarted by a penalty. So this is their third time in the red zone. Play clock at five. Sudfeld gets set. Here comes an unabated blitz right up the middle. Joe Bolden tried to time it up, and he came through before the snap. Just a little early. Yeah, that just, was just, just a tad bit. Trying to pull a Troy Palomalu. Offside. Defense unabated to the backfield, number 35. Five-yard penalty remains second down. He had eyes for Zach, uh, for Nate Sudfeld the whole way. So that will put the ball inside the 10 down to nearly the seven-yard line. I'll tell you what, their captain, Joe Bolden, the guy next to him, Morgan, did not play the best ball. And I don't know if it's Glasgow's out in front, not playing a nose tackle. Some of the guys that they're used to seeing, right, cover them up a little bit. But both of those guys, both in coverage and their run fits, that time on that penalty, just a little bit out of whack, a little bit out of sorts. It surprised me there's a little conversation at halftime to get right. Screen set up. Blockers out in front for Jordan Howard. He's going to walk into the end zone. We have an Indiana touchdown. Well, a taste of their own medicine. Michigan, one of the better screen games in college football. I showed you a bunch of those this week. Give some real credit to Nate Sudfeld right there. To Dan Feeney, his right guard. To the play call from Kevin Wilson and crew. To draw that Michigan defense to get people out in front of Howard. And what a response. Number one, to finally punt it on fourth down, right? To trust your defense to get the stop, to get it back, and to march it down. And points before half, always, always big. You're right, situational football played out perfectly there for Indiana. Instead of trying the fourth down and two and a half, fourth down and three at midfield, the punt pins Michigan deep. They get field position as their defense gets a three and out, and their offense makes it stand up. Well, teaching tape here from Dan Feeney, the right guard. Look at his eyes up. Look at him square to the line of scrimmage. He doesn't panic. You'll often see big guys get out there in the open field, and A, they're not used to what to do, and then B, well, they don't hunt up with their eyes, those linebackers. And Feeney right there, one of the more experienced Hoosiers. 33 starts. He's their toughest offensive lineman. He is the bell, cry, bell cow of that crew. That time it was all about patience and execution. On ESPN.com, we tabbed Dan Feeney as a midseason All-American. So that's how much our guys that break the tape down think of Feeney as a guard. A redshirt junior from Orland Park, Illinois. One sack allowed in 33 career starts. He is a pass protector, he is a road grader run blocker. And that's the first receiving touchdown this season for Jordan Howard. And also to emphasize how important this game is for Michigan. Michigan fans know what this game means and how the season could still play out. They win this week and against Penn State, and they go into the Ohio State game with two losses, one of which, of course, was the meltdown against Michigan State. You're not sure how the committee would look at that, but if Ohio State beats Michigan State, and that sets up a division championship game between Michigan and Ohio State in three weeks, if Michigan were to win that and then beat Iowa in the Big Ten championship game and run the table the rest of the way, you don't think they're at least in the conversation for the Final Four teams, the college football playoff? Well, they're absolutely in the conversation, and let's see what Oklahoma and Oklahoma State, who's down today in the first half, and some of those other That's teams right. in front of them do. There's a lot the that could happen season. in front of them in the next three weeks. Well, a lot can happen here with 49 seconds and one timeout, and the biggest play in these moments is always the first play. Now, what? if Ohio State beats Michigan State next week, what would happen to the percentage chances for Michigan to possibly win the Big Ten, assuming they win today? and beat Penn State because then they would be in kind of a winner-take-all game against Ohio State from a divisional standpoint for the right, presumably, to get to that Big Ten championship game and play for a title. Could you imagine that if Jim Harbaugh got this team into a Big Ten championship game where the consolation prize would be the Rose Bowl? <laughs> that would be unbelievable. As Rudock, aggressive towards the end of the first half, finds Darbo. Well, that sets it all up right there. That's 17 yards on first down. You want to know what kind of the mindset of a play caller is on that other sidelines here. What do you do on first down? The deep out to the boundary. Absolutely does go out of bounds. They're going to have a little bit of ball control if you're Darbo. But once again, a pinpoint throw on time. Jake Rudolph, long throw. Again, it's Chesson. 
Chase Dutra tried to rip it out but couldn't. It's another first down for Michigan. Stops the clock. Reserving their timeout. Now we've got an injured player. And that's Chesson. Holding his lower back. He has all three Michigan touchdowns here in the first half. There is no potential 10 second runoff. See the deep out to the boundary on the first pass. This one is just your very typical. It's in the playbook day number one, your little curl route. Right into the zone coverage. You see the hit there, I think, right at the very end. That hit to the headgear. He's the one that slowed Jessen. Jessen. Well, Michigan fans right now need to see J.U. Chesson get up because he has been the playmaker for their offense here in the first half. And they've brought Jabril Peppers over onto the offensive side of the ball, at least in part because he is a very explosive weapon. But outside of Chesson, they don't have a lot of home run hitters on their offense. So the, the talent drop-off, you would think, from a Chesson and a Peppers down the line to the guys that would be replacing them, they don't have the kind of depth where they can afford to lose their best wide receiver. No, and they're vastly inexperienced, and that's Grant Perry, the true freshman. That's Maurice Ways, the second-year player. So, yes, you are losing a ton of seasoning with Chesson on the sidelines. Rudock has been nearly perfect here in the first half. Long throw to the sideline. Coming back to make the adjustment is the tight end, Jake Butt. Well, now they're in position where they can take shots at the end zone before settling for a field goal before halftime. How good is that? How, just how good is Jake Butt? Well, he's good enough to go outside against the number one corner for Indiana, run a little double move, a little hitch and go right there. And like the guys at the next level are doing time and again, the Gronkowskis of the world, such a weapon when you can use your six foot six, 250 pound frame and simply block out the 5'10", 175 Fant. Jake Rudock is 15 of 16 here in the first half. His incompletion was a drop. He's been perfect. Play action again. Now he'll take off. Gets a block out on the edge. Inside the 10. Oh, does he get hit hard out of bounds? And here come the flags. Zach Shaw. Dropped a big hit on Jake Rudock just as he got to the sideline. After the play, personal foul, unnecessary roughness. Late hit out of bounds, number 33 on the defense. Penalized half the distance to the goal line. Automatic first down. The clock will snart on the snap. You asked earlier about quarterbacks being treated differently. <laughs> yeah. Like when you're a fifth-year senior, in that time, you do you do see Rudock's foot in the white. And, and that's that's what they're going to look for. As hard as that is on Shaw, who's going full speed and getting blocked, once Rudock's foot steps out of bounds, you are going to get that penalty as Wilson runs on the field. Running out on the field to call a timeout to Kevin Wilson. So the timeout called by Indiana. They are now out of timeouts. But with 13 seconds to go in the first half, what's important to note is that Michigan still has a timeout. So really the, the full playbook is still at the disposal of the Wolverines here. They can run it if they want. They can throw it if they want. It's up to them. Hey, Bob, Jake Rudock's pretty good. <laughs> I think we figured that out. No, I, I'm serious. I think Michigan folks were trying to say, well, it was Rutgers. I mean, you pointed out Rutgers' defense. They're terrible. So it's one thing to do it against Rutgers. Even Minnesota the week before, he gets knocked out of the game. You can't play the position better. On the call there with Jim Harbaugh, I said, Jim, what, what did he grade against Rutgers? Because I didn't see one negative play. He didn't miss one throw, one read, one decision. And this is even building upon it. A 99 QBR against Rutgers, one of the top five performances of the entire season in college football, and he's even better today. He'll throw it with 13 seconds to go into the end zone, broken up. Intended for Chesson, who was able to fight off the back injury and get back on the field. Rashard Fan made the stop. And that's why I really didn't like that earlier pass interference call on the receiver. You give some liberty and some freedom to these DBs to reach and to grab and to hold, then you have got to give that same freedom to the wide receivers. Could have easily been pass interference and hold there on fans. 
A stop needed by the Indiana defense as Michigan starts the second half with the ball. Second down inside the five. Rudolph under pressure. Side arms one to the goal line. And it's incomplete. Well, that might have been the first error in judgment as Zach Shaw was all over Rudolph. He short hopped it. Jonathan Crawford almost came up with an interception. So now with only four seconds to go, in spite of the fact that it's third down, it'll be a field goal attempt as Jim Harbaugh sends out Kenny Allen to try what amounts to a little more than an extra point. So Michigan adds three at halftime, but it's a one possession game. When we start the third quarter, Michigan will have the ball to begin the third, but Indiana is down by eight in a position they've been so many times before. We'll come back after these messages and a word from our local ABC stations. tight football game they lost on a big comeback by Rutgers and the teams in the top 10 like Ohio State Iowa Michigan State they had chances to win in the second half couldn't pull it off we'll see what has to happen today for them to pull off the upset as we take a look at our Pacific Life game summary and what they'll have to do at some point is do something to get the combination of Rudock to Chesson off schedule. Yeah, one of the five best days in college football last week against Rutgers, and Jake Rudock only built on that in the first 30 minutes of play with three more touchdown passes. And how about Jordan Howard, a buck 74 against a top 10 rush defense in Iowa last Saturday, and 99 already in the first half, and a wonderfully conceived in time screen pass for a very rare thing, a touchdown pass against Michigan just the fifth they've allowed all season long. There goes Jabril Peppers in motion. And it's a little jet sweep. He's got nowhere to go. He's going to lose about 10 yards. It's actually a loss of eight back to the 17. Chase Dutra stayed home, as did a few other Hoosiers to bring him down. That's a really good play there by Dutra. It's that technique. You've got to keep an athlete like Peppers inside, allow your buddies to come and help you finish as well. Finishing, I promise you, that was the conversation that Kevin Wilson had with his guys in the other locker room. 30 good minutes of play, lots of good things offensively, but have got to find a way to get off the field on third down defensively, and a negative play like that on first down certainly helps. Second down and long. Under pressure is Rudolph. Buys time. Throws it away. Let's go down to Shannon. Well, Brock, when you mentioned Jim Harbaugh talking about energy and effort for his defense in the halftime locker room, you are exactly right. Those were huge teaching points. He told his defense, you got to wrap up better. We just have to tackle. And as far as his offense, he said, guys, we have got to set the tone from the very start of this second half. If we don't kill our, hurt ourselves, if we play our game, they shouldn't be able to stop us. And might be true if not for third and 18 to come out to start the second half. And they're having a personnel problem. Do you spend a timeout here to avoid a delay of game? Is it worth it to lose a timeout before third and 18? Jim Harbaugh thinks so. So Michigan already backed up third and 18 and losing a timeout as they couldn't get the personnel squared away. And you could see that little stare down the sidelines, that coach that's got to get the personnel in. Some miscommunication there. And let's see if that one comes back and bites him late in this game. It's Saturday Night Football presented by Walmart, and this might be the game of the day. Number 12, Oklahoma, and the first big test for number 6, Baylor, on ABC at 8 Eastern. Tonight at 8 on ABC, also streaming live on Watch ESPN. It's Saturday Night Football. And Brock, is this a game where Baylor... 
finally proves all the doubters wrong, at least this season. They haven't beaten these above 500 teams. Now they get a chance against a top 12 team against Oklahoma. And it's a, a rivalry that of late they have done quite well in. This is a weekend for the Big 12 to get started. Baylor is sitting there at six, and I know there's been so much angst and conversation about, well, what about this and what about that and what if this and what if that. Now, 60 minutes tonight will finally help decide, most importantly, just where this Big 12 sits. Empty backfield after the timeout, third down and long. And a sack! Rudock had no chance. They kept in only five to block, and they paid the price for it. Darius Latham brings them down, a loss of seven. And hands on hips, and that's not what Jim Harbaugh wanted coming out. He wanted to possess the ball. The defense was on the field an awfully long time, and you finally see one of those line stunts get home. And you know what else you see? Within that line stunt, some pretty good lanes and four guys dominating five. That's not the start out of halftime that Mr. Harbaugh was looking for. And we'll see where field position ends up for Indiana. A kick to midfield. Returnable for Mitchell Page. Looking for room. Keeping it alive. Breaking tackles. Mitchell Page down the sideline. Touchdown. What did Shannon say? Oh, what was the message at halftime from Jim Harbaugh? Energy, wrapping up, finishing tackles. You come out and you play three poor plays offensively. And then you punt it to Mitchell Page. Not done that kind of damage all season. You missed two, three tackles. Nobody wraps up. And you get this crowd excited here in Bloomington, Indiana. Way too early, you'd think, to go for two. So much more could happen in this second half. So they kick the point and make it a one-point game. What a start to the second half for Indiana. Their defense gets a stop and their special team scores. Redshirt Jr., the former walk-on that brings back the punt to make it a one-point game, doesn't want this to happen again. All of these close games in conference in the third quarter, including one where they had a seemingly dominant lead over Rutgers, all losses as they couldn't hold on in the fourth quarter. So much more football to play between now and the end, but a special teams touchdown bodes well for Indiana. Bob Wischusen, Brock Eward, and Shannon Spake. And now it's back on Michigan, Brock, to try and answer. Jordan Lewis from the one. They'll have good field position looking for their answer. Close to the 40-yard line before he stepped out. And let's go back and take a look at why this punt return turned into a touchdown. Well, it was a good punt. It was directional. You had a few Wolverines sitting and staring, and it was that missed tackle right there by Channing Stribling, the junior. Just one missed tackle, and you lose containment, and then it's just all the speed of the little guy. Listed at five foot seven. I don't know if he's quite that, but Kevin Wilson loves it. Yep. And Kevin Wilson's words weren't about being close. They are about fighting. I don't want to psychoanalyze anything else. I would just want to see my guys fight for 60 minutes. Drake Johnson to the 42-yard line for a gain of three. I think if you're Michigan right now, you love your efficiency yards per play. 10.9 yards per play in that first half. But to play that complimentary football, and that looks like Dutra down, unfortunately, for Indiana. Complimentary football to their great defense means running it. means taking the air out of the ball a little bit and controlling it and possessing it. Wouldn't be surprised to see some heavy run here. Chase Dutra averages 9.2 tackles per game in Big Ten play. That is seventh best in the conference. And that's a lot of weight that came down on the top of Chase Dutra. He was born in Turkey and grew up in Alaska, part of an Army family that moved around, obviously. And then just before high school, settled outside of Indianapolis, where he went to high school in Brownsburg. Ended up coming to IU and has risen up the depth chart to be their starter at free safety. And this will be a real challenge to some of the structure that Brian Knorr is playing with tonight, their defensive coordinator, because Dutra is so versatile. He plays their nickelback. You saw him earlier on the containment of Peppers. He does a wonderful job in their base defense at safety. 
He's their third leading tackler, but in many ways, as far as versatility goes and protecting against the big play on the back end of their defense, he is vital, and I think Coach Knorr knows that. And you're going to see even more inexperience, more than likely. Cook, another true freshman, will team with Crawford, a true freshman. Tyler Green, a true freshman at corner. Immense amount of inexperience on the field, trying not to be close anymore for the Hoosiers. And they've given up big chunk plays to this Michigan offense, specifically to J.U. Chesson, who has 140 yards receiving and three touchdowns. Play action for Ruda over the middle. Darbo almost got loose. He picks up a first down. Rashad Fant made the stop. Let's go down to Shannon. Well, it's a perfect time, Bob, for us to take a look at the bright side brought to you by CarMax. It's all about Amaro Darbo. He's a senior wide receiver who was born in the war-torn area of Sierra Leone. 14 years old, he was sponsored and came over to the United States to Des Moines, Iowa. And last month, after living here for 14 years, he became a U.S. citizen. He said he always considered himself an American, and that was the final step. Great story. It was a great story, and our thanks to the Michigan Sports Information Department for the pictures. His first down catch puts Michigan in plus territory, and they go back to the ground for three to Drake Johnson. T.J. Simmons on the tackle for IU. It'll be second down and about eight. Heavy run, heavy play pass. I think you're going to see an awful lot of it here in the final 30 minutes. I think Coach Harbaugh knows. Without Glasgow, their nose tackled defensively. He saw an injury as well to DeMonte Thomas. He's fighting like mad to get back on the field. That his defense against this Indiana crew has been reeling a little bit. He really would like to see some offensive possession. Play action for Rudolph. Two-man route, and he still finds his target. Only two players that are targets on that play for Jake Rudock. One is Darbo, and he's got a first down to gain a 14. One thing you are going to see with Rudock when you watch him is he is so balanced. You know, we're at Indiana with a lot of great shooters. Saw Coach Crean at halftime downstairs. And when you want to think of the best shooters, more often than not, they are so repetitive in their motion. They are so balanced. When I watch Rudock in warm-ups, Bob, that one ball hit the ground, not even one. And it's because when he throws in that pocket with space around him, he throws with tremendous balance and a very repetitive release. Rudock escaping the pocket. Throws it away. Well, you mentioned Coach Cream. He's a little torn today. As obviously he is the head basketball coach here at IU, but that's his brother-in-law down on the sideline as the head coach at Michigan. Married to John and Jim Harbaugh's sister. How about that Thanksgiving or Christmas dinner table? Talk about some unbelievable nice coaching. I mean, to be a fly on the wall yeah, of that coaching but you conversation. you know it is so competitive, right? Growing up with brothers as I did. I'd just like to hear them talk strategy. Play action again for Ruda. All kinds of time. Low throw. Did Darbo scoop it up? Nope, incomplete. Fant again in coverage. And this brings up a big play now. Third down and 10. In field goal range for Michigan, but can Indiana get a stop? Well, you can hear it. I mean, for one of the first times here, there's a lot of maize and blue in the stands, but you can hear some of the fans here that can kind of feel it, and they want to be the difference to make that one critical play that so often in these matchups against top 15 teams, they've been unable to do so. Blitz coming. Michigan picks it up. Rudolph takes a shot at the end zone and underthrows Darbo. Here comes the field goal group. He underthrows it, but I think an opportunity, ah, just a little bit low. Yeah, that's about a foot and a half away from being just another one of those pinpoint throws. Rudolph did not miss a one of those in the first 30 minutes. That time, just a little bit behind Darbo. Kenny Allen made right before halftime. This one from about twice the distance, 42 yards out. Bad snap. The placement was bobbled. And the, the kick comes up well short and left. So Michigan with a muff on the field goal group. Scott Sipniewski with a low snap. Blake O'Neill did not get a clean spot. And it's still only a one-point lead for Michigan. Military. And obviously our chance with Veterans Day just passing this week to thank all 
of our servicemen and women for everything they do for us. Nate Sudfeld starts this drive with a quarterback keeper and a slide out to the 30-yard line. He picks up six yards after Michigan botched a field goal attempt from 42 yards out. So Indiana with a chance to take the lead on this drive. That'll be offsides. That'll give a first down to IU as Maurice Hurst jumped. Offside with contact. Defense number 73. That five-yard penalty results in the first down. Michigan amidst all their lofty rankings defensively also number one in pass efficiency defense and Nate Sutfeld 15 to 25 buck 55 and a touchdown in that first half as effective as anybody has been against these Wolverines this season. Blitz coming. Little pick play out on the edge, and it works for a gain of five to Ricky Jones. Delano Hill made the stop, and they'll actually say gain of four to the 40-yard line, so it's second down and six. Only one linebacker in the tackle box, at least for now. Is that something that Sudfeld realizes with 12 on the play clock? Exactly right. Good little chess match. Now they creep another linebacker in. Now a player not only jumps in the neutral zone, but we might have a false start on the left tackle, Jason Sprague. False start. Offense, number 78. Five-yard penalty. Remains second down. It's always one of the dangers, Bob. I played in two very different systems. In the West Coast system, Mike Holmgren did not like checks. Get up and run it. We've got built-in answers. Everything about Tom Moore and Peyton Manning was you check with me. And that fine line between sitting there at the line too long and his lineman falling offside. Sudfeld wastes no time going downfield here. Coming back to make a perfect adjustment to the ball is Simi Cobbs. Jeremy Clark, he didn't locate it. Cobbs did, and it's a gain of 43. Kevin Wilson will not step off the accelerator. Was incredibly aggressive in the first half, and I bet you he's going to be even more so here in the second. Sudfeld to throw again. Bullet to the outside. That one's too hot to handle for Cobbs. Jeremy Clark again in coverage. It'll be second down and ten. First carry of the second half for Jordan Howard, and it's a good one. Inside the 10, first and goal of the eight. The fourth time that Indiana has been in the red zone against this Michigan defense. Well, it was our right guard once again, Feeney, with tremendous push. The double team getting to the second level. Howard doing the difference. Howard again. This time gets walled off right at the line of scrimmage. Maybe fell forward for a yard. It'll be second down and goal. Michigan's defense has been, in so many statistical categories, spectacular. But they have only allowed three touchdowns, amazingly only seven goal-to-goal -goal situations this entire season. But they've not been run on like this. And that is what challenges even the elite defense when you have the kind of balance that Indiana has played with offensively. Howard, the Michigan front not fooled. Willie Henry right at the line brings him down. And now it's third down and goal coming up from the seven. And that was a really nice play by Willie, the leading sacker, tackle for lost guy for Michigan. He gets his hands on Camille. He tosses him aside. He's able to bring the force on the tackle. Michigan sends a blitz on third down. There's a slant off the hands of the tight end, Michael Cooper. It was almost as if the ball got on top of him faster than he thought it would, which I guess you have to be aware of if the blitz is coming, if the ball's coming out quick. Yeah, that's the matchup they wanted. We have seen it on the other side with Jake Butt and the difference of having a pass-catching tight end with a tremendous frame. Cooper also 6'5", 250. 
But that ball, a lot of steam on it from Sudfield. Just did not allow Cooper the time to get his head, his hands around. And Michigan holds strong yet again. Here's Griffin Oaks. He is three for three, his longest from 51. This from only 25. Indiana has not led. Until now. IU has the lead midway through the third. We've got a football game here in Bloomington. Can Kevin Wilson's team finally hang on and win a Big Ten game? Between now and then in college football and maybe on this very field, Bob Wischusen, Brock Ewart, Shannon Spake, seeing Brock. Very interesting games start to develop here. Yes, we have. And Michigan's been involved in very interesting games. The finish against Michigan State, the finish against Minnesota. They are also not a stranger to competitive games to the wire. Jordan Lewis brings it out from five yards deep. And gets stood up at the 20-yard line. If he takes a knee, gets to the 25. Did the ball come out? Indiana thinks the ball came out, and they think they've got it. Well, let's see the officials get together here and what they come up with. Leon Thornton, a true freshman wide receiver, came out with the ball. The runner's progress is stopped. First down. That is not reviewable. Wow. And that is a very, very important distinction by the officials. Forward progress, that's a judgment call. And very rarely do you see it called like that when a player is going down to the ground. He's not stood up. They will say that. They will try to always protect those runners and those players. When he is being thrown to the ground and you see guys ripping and clawing, you typically do not see that distinction made. So Michigan holds on to the football at their own 20-yard line. Jordan Lewis, fortunate. Hand off. Davion Smith to about the 24-yard line. Let's check in with Cassidy again. All right, Cassidy, you know, we talked about that game and how that is the perfect example of who knows what might happen in November in college football. Can the Cowboys come from behind? And the Wolverines come from behind. A toss to Smith. To the 25-yard line. He maybe picked up a yard. Third down and five coming up for Michigan. Bob, when you go back and you look at these Michigan or these Indiana close losses, what you have typically seen, a common theme, is a big play. It was Ezekiel Elliott that gets out and he has a 65-yard run on a third down. It is a big play that has been crippling to Indiana. They must make Michigan earn it. Give up a first down. Keep a play in front of you. You must make them go the long field, something they've been unable to do against explosive offenses. False start. Looked like Eric Magnuson, the right tackle, started just a shade early. False start. Offense number 78. Five-yard penalty remains third down. Nine Michigan penalties. And this makes it third down and ten. And this should be a four-man rush for Indiana. As I watch many of those games unfold, so often those big crippling plays came on blitzes. You've got inexperience out there. Kevin Wilson wants it. He is calling for his crowd to get involved. This is where you've got to lean on those four guys up front to be difference makers for you defensively. It is a four-man rush. Rudock underneath. Fighting for the sticks and picking up the first down is Darbo. Amara Darbo with just enough to move the chains at the 31-yard line. Well, that's a one-on-one -on -one with T. Gray Scales in that spot right there. Scales, the hardest hitter. Scales, the guy that has the biggest uncoil defensively there with Brian Knorr and his group. And that time in a one-on-one, -on -one, he cannot bring Darbo down behind the sticks. Huge third down conversion for Michigan. Five on the third. Back to the ground and Smith. 
to the 34-yard line for three. Tony Fields came up to help on the tackle. Right back to throw Ruda. Finds a soft spot in the zone again. It's another first down. Out close to midfield. Guess who? Amara Darbo. Just as Chesson was the workhorse for big plays in the first half, the ball control possession receiver in the second half so far has been Darbo. Such a good job with his eyes, Jake Rudock right there. He can see it. He can see some of this conservative nature right now defensively for Indiana. Lots of zone defense. And you watch him on that last drop back. He is looking down the middle. There is nothing keen the drop of those defenders. He uses his eyes to manipulate the zone defenders. Get the window to throw it and then throws yet again another dart. Play action again. Rudock. This time he wants it all looking for Darbo. He's got it inside the 10 yard line. Now they'll say incomplete. It came loose when he hit the turf. Fant knew he was beat, tried to grab his jersey. May have gotten away with a penalty. Had it all the way down to the turf and then it came free when he hit the ground. That's 55 yards in the air and once again, that's a serial box that Jake Rudock hit. 55 yards down the field. You cannot throw it better than that. It's hard to play the position much more efficiently than Jake is doing right now. And off to Smith on second down. He's loose. Maybe on Smith. Carrying tacklers. Rumbling to the 33. The junior from Warren, Ohio, picks up 20 in a first down. And that's it. That's it. Th those are the plays. These are exactly the kind of plays where you've got eight defenders around the line, and it doesn't matter because Davion Smith says, I am going to run through your tackles. Corner, you want to blitz? You want to you come off that edge? I will run right through your arm tackle. That's all want to. Like the Tyrone Wheatley coach, Davion Smith. Last year, he only had two starts and still led Michigan with 509 rushing yards. And he is their leader again this year. There he goes again. This time gang tackled. We talked about that camera club this season, how defensive coaches like to have a lot of guys in the picture as Smith's helmet came off. He'll have to leave the field for at least a play, and he is shaken up. There were a lot of guys in that camera picture defensively that time for the Hoosiers. Huge to see Dutra back in the game for Indiana as one of those guys getting himself involved. There's the head coach going out to check on his 228-pound workhorse running back. He seems more frustrated than injured at this point. Well, he's felt that entire pile, that camera club you talked about as he was standing up. And I told you about that forward progress stop. It's usually done and called to protect players. And that time he is in a pile, his legs underneath him, and you can see it. Here's his fire and his frustration to say, really? Where are you protecting me here as all these guys are trying to take shots and bend me over this pile? It's getting testy in Bloomington. Drake Johnson in the game of tailback now in place of Smith. Second down and eight. Indiana brings a blitz. Rudock checks it down. Drake Johnson down the sideline or check that. It's Sione Homa down the sideline. And he's got a first down. Another good decision made in the face of pressure by Jake Rudock. That's Fox 2 XY hook in Jim Harbaugh's West Coast system. That goes from the tight end to the split end on a deep hook, and your final outlet is your fullback. And you see how quickly Jake Rudock is firing through that progression. That is number three. That is your outlet. And there's no panic. He never loses his cool. He knows where his check down is. Boy, it'd be fun to imagine if Jake Rudock had even more time in Jim's system than just this, his fifth year. That's Chesson and Darbo stacked left. 
Play clock at four. Play clock down to two. Flags down. It'll be a false start. Pick a player. Ball start. Offense, five yard penalty. Next first down. Indiana has not had problems in the third quarter. It's the fourth quarter where things have fallen apart. They have been tremendous in the third and have positioned themselves to win games in the fourth and then have been dominated, Brock, at times in the final 15 minutes. Testament to coaching and adjustments in that fourth quarter, a challenge with inexperience and depth. First and 15. Gabriel Peppers has the slot receiver left, and just as he goes in motion, we've got flags again. Illegal snap. Offense number 61. Five-yard penalty remains. First down. That's 11 Michigan penalties. And many of them of the pre-snap variety. And, and it's loud, but it's not anywhere near as deafening as many of the locales and venues that Jim Harbaugh is going to play in. And that time, a fifth-year senior, Glasgow. He was leaning on that snap, the only one set to go. Mental mistakes before the snap will kill you on the road. This time, Darbo's in motion. First and 20. Four-man rush. That ball tipped at the line and falls incomplete. Looked like a hand up for Ralph Green on the rush. He may have deflected it. It'll be second down and 20. Do you know how sinking a feeling that is as a quarterback when that ball gets tipped in the air? You are doing everything like mad. Try to get that thing to fall like a lead balloon. Good job there by Ralph Green to getting his hands up. Just continue to four-man rush. Continue to make Michigan earn it down after down. Davion Smith back as the eye back. Play action for Ruda. Well protected, floats it, and it's intercepted! The true freshman safety, Jonathan Crawford, his third pick of his freshman year. It's a takeaway for IU. And I was complimenting the eyes earlier of Rudolph in that progression, but this just a two-man route with a very late check down coming out. His eyes are looking the entire time. The big A.J. Williams who's lumbering across the field and it gives Crawford, the true freshman, no more, says Kevin Wilson. You have started every single game at that safety position. He reads Rudolph's eyes and he has the athleticism to go up and bring it down. Indiana with the lead and the football and the running attack of Jordan Howard which has been so good today. And he picks up three here as the pile moved out to about the 17-yard line. Maurice Hurst got him around the ankles. He was the first there for Michigan. Correct me if my eyes are wrong. Has he gone backwards once? And every time he has hit that pile, it has been another yard or yard and a half. Here he goes again with a cutback. Now close to the 30-yard line with a first down for Indiana goes Jordan Howard. 17 times now in his career he has gone over 100 yards going back to his days at UAB that's the 10th time in the last 12 games he's got 100 yards rushing he's been the beneficiary of some really good blocking in front of him that veteran offensive line is just simply winning more times than not trying to turn the corner as Howard stays on his feet Out of bounds, close to another first down. And why is this game so important for Michigan? Well, next week, the top two teams in the Big Ten East play each other. If Ohio State beats Michigan State, and Michigan is able to come from behind today and beat Penn State next week, it would be the showdown Thanksgiving weekend with Ohio State with a chance to get to the Big Ten championship game. So, so much at stake for the Wolverines. But they have to find a way to beat an Indiana team that hasn't won a game in conference yet. Divine Redding caught at the line by Royce Jenkins Stone.
Will Indiana run a play before the end of the third quarter? They don't have to. But they're a tempo offense. They're lining up as if they're going to snap it. And just look at the number of bodies committed. This is all a check with me game. When Nate's walking over there, Kevin Wilson, Kevin Johns, offensive coordinator, trying to get a good gauge. Looks like they're going to go to the fourth. And they're going to go to the fourth with some tremendous momentum. But the way they're running, they are a very difficult stop right now for Michigan's defense. This kind of balance is what you do to take apart even the country's best on that side of the ball. Indiana has been outscored 72 to 10 in the fourth quarter in their last four games. Can they finally win one? Back after this message and a word from our local ABC stations. Well, here's why. Look at all of these close games and a dominant lead over Rutgers after three quarters and then what the finals have been. They have not been able to finish. Can Indiana finish today against Michigan or can Michigan win a crucial road game and keep their Big Ten title hopes alive? We start the fourth quarter with Sudfeld through the air. To the outside is tight end Michael Cooper. Makes the catch as we take a look at our Pacific Life game summary. And Jordan Howard well over the average for Michigan. Look at this. Look at 139 rushing yards for the big boy running back. And Rudolph just the one mistake, the one interception. Sudfeld with a blitz coming over the middle. Sliding attempt made at about the 47-yard line by Donovan Hale. And it looks like they'll give him the catch. And they will. That's good for an Indiana first down. And now they may take another look. Rule to catch on the field for the true freshman, Donovan Hale. The what? The true Rolling freshman? The field was a catch resulting in a first down. The play is under further review. The that. true freshman against Jabril Peppers? And that would be only his second catch of the season. So it's a vital call. If this is a completion, it's a first down in plus territory. And if not, it'd be third down coming up for Indiana. Does he have it secured all the way through the catch as he makes contact with the ground? This might give us a better look. Yes. Yeah, if you're going to be consistent with the earlier touchdown from Chesson, then that is almost exactly the same look. Hands underneath it, possesses it, and I love Kevin Wilson yesterday. So sick and tired of all the psychoanalyzing why are you close? What do you have to do? What, what plays do you need to make? After further review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. First down. So the true freshman has a catch at a first down. And Kevin Wilson said, enough. Enough of this. I don't want to hear any more, but I want to fight. Jim Harbaugh is going to fight. And you know what I want my guys to do? Not be thinking. I want them to go out there, and I want them to fight. And I'll tell you what, their run game and their offensive line has been so indicative of that message and taking it over. But on third down, Nate Sudfeld doesn't have to make 15 or 20 plays. Just the five or six difference makers here down the stretch if they run it the way they've been running it. Sudfeld looks long to the sideline. Cindy Cobbs makes the catch. And he's knocked out after a gain of five. Jeremy Clark made the stop. But again, the Indiana Hoosiers outscoring their opponents by over seven points per game in the third quarter, being outscored by over eight points per game in the fourth. Sudfeld. Floats one to the sideline, looking for a big one. And it's incomplete. Ricky Jones could bring it in. Well, that's a good throw to the one spot where his guy can get it or nobody can get it. But that's back-to-back -back throws after you have been controlling this game on the ground. And I think having Michigan really on their heels in that run game, now you put yourself with those two throws into a little more precarious third down situation here. The number two third down defense in America is Michigan. Third down and six with the play clock winding down. Sudfeld gets his team set. They're going to run it. Now do they go for it? That's a loss of a yard no. to Devine Redding. No, you can't go for it here. 
Taco Charlton made the tackle. And now it's fourth and seven, and that's too much for Kevin Wilson to avoid sending the punt group out. And that's a check with me, and as much as that group has struggled defensively for Michigan, that time they play a two-safety look, and they dare Kevin Wilson and Nate Sudfeld to run it. They do, and that time, for the first time in some time, Michigan gets off their blocks and makes a play. Eric Toth with the wobbly kick. Inside the five, into the end zone. You got six IU players down there with a chance to get under that punt. And as a group, they couldn't keep it out of the end zone. It'll be a touchback out to the 20 for Michigan when we come back. Early fourth quarter. Can Michigan come from behind? Remember a few years ago, Oklahoma State, in tough circumstances, went up there and lost. Not always easy to go up to Ames in November, and Syracuse putting some points on the board against that Clemson defense. And Notre Dame being at least right now in the top four raised some eyebrows and sparked a debate that an undefeated Big 12 team get shut out. Rudock scrambles for three as we check in again with Cassidy Hubbard. If you are going to win a championship, even to play for a championship, there are days where you have to win when you are not at your best against an inferior opponent. That might apply today to Oklahoma State. Right now, might apply to Michigan. High formation on second and ten. Rudock, easy pitch and catch to Chesson. First down. And I would add further to that, Bob. Not only you're not at your best, but you are going to get the other side's absolute best shot emotionally. That Iowa State isn't playing for a bowl or a Big 12. They're playing to try to get that one marquee win. And Indiana is fighting so desperately still for some bowl eligibility that may be waiting for them the final couple weeks. And a win today would go an immensely long ways towards that. So you get that opponent's best shot as well. Rudock steps up in the pocket again, buys time, and that ball was hit as he tried to release it. Let's go down to Shannon. Hey, Bob, it's amazing what a two-point lead will do for your confidence. The Indiana defensive coaches telling their guys, we cannot take our foot off the gas. We've got to continue to impose our will. If we do, we can beat them into submission. How's that for belief? You know what's impressive as well, Brock, to build off of that? This is only the 53rd Michigan offensive play coming up here. So maybe that IU defense has more gas in the tank than they normally would at this point in the game. Credit to that complimentary football of their offense that has controlled it for so long. Now it's Homa in as the lone setback behind two tight ends. He'll take the handoff. Lowers his shoulders, gets across the 40 to the 41-yard line. Well, here's one of those moments. In the fourth quarter, you force third down and four to build off Shannon's point. Can you keep your foot on the gas pedal? If you're Indiana's defense, can you get a stop? Now it's Davion Smith as the tailback on third down. And a long three close to four. Here comes the blitz. Rudock under pressure. Can he run for it? Lowers his shoulders with a little ball fake. And he's got it out to the 46-yard line. And I know it is always a dilemma for those defensive coordinators. Do I bring the pressure? Do I play my base stuff? But I just feel like Indiana is at a point at the back end of their defense with still some, some youth. Their talent and their strength is up front. I would still love to see them just be committed to rushing four because when you blitz like you did there on third down, you leave opportunities for Rudock to take advantage of. Another play action fake for Rudock. Right at the first down marker. A strike to Chesson. And it looks as if they'll have the first down by a half yard. He will. In front of Dutra. Not called Jake Butt's name here for quite some time. I would be surprised 
over the next 44 or so yards of this possession that he is not a factor or a prominent read in the progression at some point here soon. Only 10 on the field defensively for Indiana. First charge. Dutra's timeout upset, but a timeout had to be called from the sideline. That timeout was called from the Indiana sideline as they ran someone on late. In tight games in the fourth quarter, they have not been able to finish. First and ten for Michigan here. Maybe on Smith. He took Clyde Newton for a piggyback ride for five to the 39-yard line. A lost helmet there for defensive end Sean Heffern, so he has to go off for at least one play. Drake Johnson has the eye back. A fake, and Rudolph goes up the seam, and incomplete. Into the hands of Darbo. Dutra had it red and almost jumped it for an interception. A lot could have happened on that play. Instead, it's an incompletion, third down and five. Yeah, I think if Dutra has that play over again, I think he does pick it. He, he, he saw it coming, and that's where you have got to trust yourself. You have just simply got to pull the trigger. Just hesitated for a second, jumped a little bit early. An incompletion on what could have been another game-changing interception. Where are you going on third and five if you're Michigan? Where is Jake Buck? He's set up right on the line, empty backfield. Rudock straight back to throw, wants the slant left. Fighting for the football is Darbo. And they give him the catch in the first down. Clyde Newton couldn't rip it out. Clyde Newton, 6-1 and 230. And we saw Darbo earlier against TJ Tigray Scales. And that time he carries the strong side linebacker for the first down. That is an awareness of where the sticks are. That is about want to and strength. In the big moments on third down, defensively, that's where Indiana in this fourth quarter has fallen short. Do they have to continue to put this on Rudock, or can their run game be? For Michigan, what Indiana's run game has been for them. The better you run, the better the mix, the better the game-changing play-action pass. Here's a run. Maybe on Smith bounces it outside, but not enough. Marcus Oliver tracked him down. TJ Simmons there as well. Simmons now with five and a half tackles for loss this season. And show that commitment. They make a play. They load up the box, put a lot of numbers around it. You can live with that because off of that heavy run, you know what's coming, what's been in a very effective passing game in their play-action game. The 11th play of the drive, second down and 11. You better watch Jake Butt vertically with the two-safety look. He's running down the seam here. Rudock doesn't look that way. Instead, he scrambles. Slides right at the first down marker. And it looks like they're going to give him the 22-yard line. That's a 12-yard scramble for the fifth-year senior. And he's got the first down. Oof. He took a very similar shot. You remember that knocked him out of the game in Minnesota with his head slamming into the ground. I think there is some incidental contact with the backside from Marcus Oliver. You hear some of the maize and blue wanting a call there, but I think Oliver is trying to fly over the top of him, and his backside is what drives Rudock into the ground. Wilton Spate, the backup quarterback, came on and won that Minnesota game. Here's Rudock going to the end zone, under throw, flag out. Amara Darbo tried to fight his way back to the football, and Richard Fenn wouldn't let him get there. As a result, it'll be pass interference. Pass interference. Defense, number 16. 15-yard penalty, automatic. First down. We've had a lot of hand fighting out on the perimeter, back and forth. Fant gets his head around, which usually gives you a little bit of freedom from the officials. But that contact, the hands in the chest of Darbo, you just cannot allow that receiver an opportunity to go back and fight for the ball. You have that amount of contact, you're going to draw the 15-yard penalty. 
Huge penalty. First and goal at the seven. Jabril Peppers stacked as one of the receivers to the bottom of your screen. They throw it to him. Breaks a tackle. Down to the one yard line. They bring the super safety. The Iron Man off the bench to play offense. And he makes it second and goal at the one. Well, you pointed it out. You knew where the ball was going to go. And that's the play you got to make. If you're going to change your fourth quarter and you're going to fight and you're going to do all these things that you talk over and over, well, you've seen it on this drive. You have got to make the tackle to get off the field on third down or to stop that play for a one-yard gain instead of a five. Indiana just made a six-player substitution defensively, and it's Sione Homa lining up as the eye back. Flags down at the snap. This could change things. And that's going to be Mason Cole, the left tackle, flipped over to the jumbo tight end. False start. Offense number 52. Five-yard penalty remains. Second down. That's 12 Michigan penalties. And they like this. They like taking their left tackle and putting him in that jumbo package. And he just flinches. So but now you've got Rudock and... The wide receivers back in the huddle as Michigan was prepared, prepared to try and play jumbo football with the 243-pound Sione Homa. And now they put Davion Smith back in. He's only 228. Play action. Rudolph in trouble. Flips it left. Unable to reach for the pylon before stepping out of bounds was Homa. They'll mark him out at the two. Oh, a little more body control. And he walks into the end zone with a touchdown. That's exactly right. They just sneak as they do such a wonderful job with all these formations and looks. They're clearly out of bounds, unable to get the 245 pounds going the other way. He was out actually closer to the three. They put the ball at the two where it's now third down and goal. 14th play of the drive. Smith the eye back. That's butt to the bottom in a one-on-one. -on -one. Timeout being called on the sideline as they lob it into the end zone for Butts. But the timeout defensively for Indiana was recognized Prior before to the snap. snap. Second charge, timeout of the half. Indiana. So we'll step aside for just a moment as well. before third down and goal. Alma the fullback. Smith the tailback. And Rudak motions his tight ends out once again. Bunch formation. A rollout for Rudak. Floats it. Short. Incomplete. Now it's fourth and goal at the two. And here comes the field goal group for Michigan to try and give the Wolverines the lead. The last time the field goal group was on the field, a bad snap and a woefully short kick from Kenny Allen. So they have left points on the field with this group. Here's Kenny Allen, a chip shot. He's clean this time, right down the middle. And Michigan has a one-point lead. Six and a half minutes to go here in Bloomington. We'll step aside one last time. Possible good thought through an impossible time to even conceive of any family having to go through as Majette brings it out to the 31-yard line, and Shannon Spakes down on the sideline. And Shannon, there have been some very special moments where even the toughest rivalries in college sports have come out 
to show that it's about much more than that. That's right, Bob. You know, it was a special day today for the Carr family. Uh, they celebrated Christmas. The Michigan and Ohio State basketball teams, they helped organize getting their house decorated for Christmas, lights and all. And Santa Claus made an early trip to the Carr residence, brought a lot of presents for Chad and his family. So Merry Christmas, Chad. Merry Christmas to the Carr family. Hope it was a beautiful day with lots of presents and lots of love. Jordan Howard with a great run to midfield for Indiana. IU trying to win the game, down by one, 6.15 to go as Michigan just took the lead on their last possession. Well, they're going to do it on the ground because on the ground will ultimately slow down the rush and lead to the possible play down the field in the passing game. But they're in this position because of Jordan Howard because of what he has been able to do on the ground and controlling it today in a way that nobody has. 160 yards now against this Michigan defense. Howard again. A gain of close to five. And tonight, after Washington State, number 19 UCLA, keep it locked into Sports Center at night for all the highlights and reaction to another busy day in college football, the NBA, the NHL as well. It is Sports Center at night tonight on ESPN, also live on Watch ESPN. Jordan Howard up the middle. And how about the play coming now? Third down and two at the 42. Now this is a place kicker, Griffin Oaks on the sideline for Indiana. As Howard a little slow to get up, and that would be a tough player for Indiana to lose. It looks like he's just tangled with the tacklers. We'll see if they reset the play clock. But Griffin Oaks, last season against Maryland, hit a 58-yarder. So they're only a handful of yards away from what would be comfortably in his range. But with five minutes to go, they're thinking about more than three. You want to fight and go down swinging, which is Kevin Wilson's words. Go through your 230-pound battering ram. They will. And he will battering ram his way inside the 40-yard line. He just moved the pile, willed his way to the 38 for a gain of four and a first down. This is a Michigan front seven that is without their best player on that defensive line and it looks like Howard has to come off. Ryan Glasgow did not make the trip. He is their toughest defender. He is the guy that at the point of attack has set the foundation in the edge and you've seen the difference without him today. Continue to run the ball right at Michigan. Now it's Majet in the game at tailback. The true freshman inside the 35 down close to the 34 yard line and we knew this was a pretty potent indiana offense we knew that they would be able to run the football at least somewhat we didn't in any way see this coming 225 yards against the third best run defense in the country sudfeld on the keeper took a hit and came up about a yard shy of the first down. They'll actually mark him down at the 30. So, Brock, another play call here. Run. Third down and Run. two at the 30. Run. Run the ball. Run the clock. You want to fight. You do it with your big boys up front. Your All-American right guard, your future NFL left tackle. And I love the commitment to it on this drive. And they've got Jordan Howard back in the game. And they give it to him. And he's got the first down. Seven straight running plays for Indiana against the third best run defense in America. And they're inside the 25 yard line. And here is your up tempo team that's still going to try to play with some rhythm, but understands situational football. Something so many of these spread teams can't because so few of them have a 230-pound running back and can lean on a veteran offensive line and a veteran senior quarterback to manage the most critical moments. Howard again. Inside the 20. Cuts it back at the 10. End zone. Touchdown. Number eight, It's a five-point lead for Indiana, so they will leave their offense on the field.
And they'll go for two after replay takes a look to make sure that Jordan Howard got in the end zone. And look at the big boys out front. It's Dan Feeney once again that is setting the pace. You're going to have to see where that knee was down and where the ball was. I think that's going to be a touchdown. Look at the big fellas. I want to talk about camera club defensively. This is what you're going to see in this frame is that ball crosses the goal line. You're going to see three big boys that are chasing the down that said to their coach, you want to go against the Minnesota team that a two-point conversion came so critical at the end of the game. This is their first opportunity. And with their defense and some of the challenges they have on the back end, and as good as Rudock has been pushing the ball down the field, better not be celebrating that touchdown, and all of your focus better go into this one and getting these two critical points. All the time in the world for Michigan with 2.52 and two timeouts. Will they be trying to tie the game or win it with a touchdown? That's determined by this play. And they'll run it. They'll be trying to tie it, because now it's a touchdown lead for Indiana. Jordan Howard with the successful two-point conversion. And Jim knows that that's, that's Jim Harbaugh football. That's just lining up, put my cleats in the ground, and I'm going to run right at you. I mean, that's what he did at Stanford. That's what he did at San Francisco. That's what he's done so effectively here this season. And he knows his group that had been so dominant in that phase of the game this season, today got pushed around. Well, Michigan still had a script that, according to Jim Harbaugh, could be written. He said our players are all well aware of what the situation is. For this to be one of the great seasons in Michigan football, it'll have to be one heck of a conclusion. But what's exciting is we have a chance to write that conclusion. Well, they need a win today. They have to beat Indiana. They have to beat Penn State next week. They need Ohio State to win next week against Michigan State to have that path truly clear and in their own hands to get to the Big Ten championship game. But first things first, they find themselves down by a touchdown with 2.52 to go. Indiana has lost 19 in a row to Michigan. And getting loose all the way out to about the 33-yard line is Jordan Lewis. So a good return, good field position, and tonight on ESPN. Got another game for you that we hope is as good as this one, number nine LSU, against a Brett Bielema Arkansas team that's won three in a row. Our coverage begins at 7.15 Eastern on ESPN. Presented by Hilton Hotels and also streaming live on Watch ESPN. Still got Leonard Fournette at the top of your Heisman ballot? No. But he's still in the top three and still has an entire month to do some damage. A lot like Jordan Howard has done tonight. That big boy, like Fournette, been the difference. Well, Jake Rudock now only has 246. He'll go to the air on first down. Over the middle, there's the guy you've been wondering, Brock, when he would step up and make a play, and Jake Buck just made one to midfield. Well, he had a touchdown if Kevin Wilson doesn't call a timeout on the previous possession, and you just know you are going to get your best players involved when it matters the most. Jim Harbaugh's been in these battles. He's not going to flinch. Jake Rudock's got tremendous poise, and you're going to see Chesson and Darbo and Butt involved here in the final two minutes. Rudock. Taking what is given to him, and it's Butt once again for close to nine yards. He gets to the 42-yard line, about eight and a half on first down. Plenty of time for Michigan. Two minutes and two timeouts, and they're already in plus territory. Four-man rush. Rudock swings it right, caught by Smith. Lost a couple of yards. Dawson Fletcher came up to help on the stop with Richard Fenn. So now it's third down and three in what is obviously all four down territory for the Wolverines with 138 to go.
pressure coming. Rudolph goes deep to the sideline, underthrown. It's caught inside the five-yard line. Jay Chesson is there for Jake Rudolph, and it's first and goal, Michigan at the two. Well, they go for two. Big-time players make big-time plays in big-time moments. And a tremendous job by Zach Shaw. And trust me, Rudolph is feeling that the entire way. He is just doing all he can to get that ball out and give his difference maker an opportunity. They've got an advantage on the perimeter. They have had it all night. It's been Indiana run and Michigan pass. It's got us to this point. And now Rudolph under center with Homa as the eye back. They give it to him. He's up the middle. Stopped at about the one-yard line. It'll be second down and goal. Two timeouts, plenty of time. But you'd like to see a little bit of rhythm here, a little bit of urgency. Clock winding down to 20 seconds to go. Still with two timeouts. Again, the eye formation with Homa. He'll try again. Stopped again. And now Jim Harbaugh will call that timeout. Third down and goal at the one. Now they have a timeout still after this one. So they still have two timeouts. Or two plays, I should say, because they've got third down play, call a timeout, fourth down play. So that means the full playbook is at their disposal. Do you still keep running it with the big battering ram at the heart of the defense? I think so. or you have to get Rudock out on the edge. I think you've got plenty of options. I think you're very comfortable with your quarterback in these moments, and he's shown it on this drive that this isn't going to overwhelm him. You, you love some of your matchups, and you have the confidence of that big, heavy run game. Don't you just love college football, though? Wow. <laughs> I mean, this, this is just exactly what you sign up for in November. In, in a game that, granted, we thought Indiana had a chance to make this a very competitive football game. But this is a different kind of game than I think we expected it to play out. Yeah, this has been Indiana with their just enforcing their will and running it right at Michigan. And really Jake Rudolph, who has had to really step up his game and carry a defense for the first time this season. And he's three feet away from evening it up. Well, now Michigan's got Drake Johnson. In as the tailback in the huddle. And it looks like they'll line up Homa in the offset eye left. Third down and goal at the one, 11 seconds to go. The toss. At the five yard line, Drake Johnson is brought down. And now things change dramatically for Michigan. They lose four yards. Now it's fourth and goal at the five, and the final timeout spent. Now you just asked me, what do you do here? That is not in my playbook. I, I get down into that, this end of the field. And Drake Johnson is not Jabril Peppers. He's not going to outrun many people to the sidelines. And you see T. Gray scales, he is all over it. You give me play pass, you get it to my best players, you get it going north and south, but you go east to west, you give Indiana advantage, you get a huge negative play. Instead of three feet, well, now you're looking at five yards. Indiana coming into today was the 119th team in college football in total defense. And rather than lining up, with your battering ram and going at the heart of that defense, they just tried to play speed football to the edge and lost four yards. And now you've taken power football, it seems, off the table. Yep. Now you've got to spread them out and try and throw it in the end zone, I would Well, think. they don't get it here. That call is going to be talked about for a long time in Ann Arbor. Because of everything at stake right now, in this game and in this moment for them, with what is looming in the weeks ahead, that will be a call that will be analyzed if you do not take care of business here. A lot of big red zone targets for Jake Rudock. He's got the tight end, Jake Butt at 6'6". J.U. Chesson has caught three touchdown passes in this game. And they'll line him up in the shotgun. This is the game. Michigan for the tie. Six seconds to go, fourth and goal. Here comes a blitz. Rudock to the end zone. In traffic, it is caught. Chesson. Touchdown! His fourth of the game!
with their season on the line. Jake Rudock comes through. His favorite target, J.U. Chesson, bails him out. And it's a point after away from a tie. He feels the pressure once again. He doesn't flinch. And J.U. Chesson with an enormous catch in the body control to bring it in. That point after hooks through. It was another bobbled snap, but a great job by Blake O'Neill to maintain control of that snap and get it down for Kenny Allen. Yeah, that was a bad snap. A grounder on the missed field goal earlier. That was a pretty darn good job by Holder to get it down, and it just sneaks in. And that fourth down just snuck into the end zone. And what a game we have in Bloomington, Indiana. We're going to overtime when we return. J.U. Chesson caught the game-tying touchdown pass. But the officials put two seconds back up on the clock, so there will be a kickoff before overtime unless Indiana pulls Dare I say a Miami rabbit out of their hat? We're going to be playing some extra football here in Bloomington. So Kenny Allen with the squib kick. And Indiana will take no chances, just jump on top of it. And that will send us now officially to overtime. What a football game. Michigan needed the two-minute drive to force this game to overtime, and here's how we got here. In the fourth quarter, it began with the running attack as it has been all game long, Brock, for Indiana. Yeah, not one pass on the final drive for Indiana. It was run after run after run, and it's Jordan Howard at 200 yards, powering his way. And on the other side, Jake Rudock has been carried by this defense for a large part of this season. They have been the most dominant in college football, but not the case today. And in complimentary football, in team football, when you've got to deliver at the quarterback position, when it matters the most in the final two minutes, Jake Rudock did. His buddy Chesson with four touchdown receptions. And that whole operation, field goal, long snapper, kicker, been a bit of a wild ride for Jim Harbaugh this afternoon. And how about Blake O'Neill? who was able to maintain his composure on the extra point snap, get the placement down so that Kenny Allen could get it through. Remember Blake O'Neill, the last time we saw him in a prominently featured special team spot, well, he took a lot of vitriol, especially on social media, for what happened at the end of the Michigan State game. Well, that very subtle play of holding the football and getting that spot down kept this game alive for Michigan. And no surprise to see them working on that operation. It's been a bit of a mess today. And it will come into role and play factor here in overtime. And Nate Sudfeld's been able to lean on his run game today. And you cannot deviate and get away from it. And J.U. Chesson, the game-tying touchdown reception. Four touchdowns today. He ties the Michigan record for touchdowns in a game with Derek Alexander back in 1992. Okay, man. Each team's gonna get one timeout per overtime period. They don't carry over. Okay. If you win the toss, you can go on offense, defense, or you can select a side of field. Michigan, you're the visitors. Please give me your talk. The call. Heads. Heads is the call. It is heads. You've won the toss. Defense. Defense. Michigan has won the toss and elects to go on defense first. Which end would you like to play at? Okay, put it coming in this way. Be first down and ten. Indiana at the 25-yard line, going this way. Let's remind you about overtime. Obviously, we've had the coin toss. Each team gets a possession from the opponent's 25-yard line per overtime until the winner is decided. And you have to go for two once we get to the third overtime if you score a touchdown. And it may be time here for Michigan defensively and DJ Durkin to turn up the heat a little bit. I think you've got to bring some extra defenders around that line of scrimmage because your front has been overwhelmed by this Indiana offensive line. When they can just line up and run right at you, snap after snap, and you know it's coming and you can't stop it, it's time for, I think, a few more reinforcements. Won't be surprised to see some blitzes. Won't be surprised to see the safeties a little more involved. If that's the case, has Nate Sudfeld been waiting to dial up a play-action fake so you take a shot at the end zone, want to get a touchdown on the board in overtime, not settle for a field goal? Yes and yes. 
They'll start with Howard on the ground. He gets to the edge. Just like that, it's first and goal at the nine-yard line for Indiana. That didn't take long. And Harbaugh is screaming for a holding call on the edge. But I don't see it. I see the left tackle, Jason Spriggs, once again winning his block and giving Howard the opportunity to get 230 pounds started. How about the ball fake? Out of bounds at the two-yard line goes Mitchell Page. Did Nate Sudfeld do an unbelievable job freezing the Michigan defense with the ball fake? Sure did, and then he gets his 6'6", 240 involved. And once again, lineman down the field. That's as good as a play-action pass and still gets your line involved, your greatest strength today. Actually, fake me. That was a reverse. Jordan Howard almost immediately gave it to Page. Second and goal at the two. Howard right up the middle. To about the yard and a half line, where it will be third down and goal. Taco Charlton and Desmond Morgan right in the middle of that pile for Michigan defensively. Okay, Morgan. Okay, Bolden. Okay, senior linebackers. Time for you guys to get involved and hit that Mack truck that has been running over you in the backfield before he can get going. They'll run it again. Howard driving his legs to the goal line. Is he in? Yes! Indiana starts over time with a touchdown. And it's Jordan Howard again. Well, it was Chris Wormley that time. It wasn't one of the linebackers. You're going to see Wormley with an opportunity here. He's turned. He is turned sideways, and he just can't do anything about the power and force of Jordan Howard. Ooh. Is he short of the goal line? They are certainly going to replay to take another look. That last look we had is probably the best one we're going to to be able to get. It's hard in that mass of bodies to see the football, but here, you get a pretty good clear look at the football. And that left elbow and forearm is short. Wow. That is down and that ball is short. Ruled a touchdown on the field. It has to be indisputable video evidence to overturn the call. And it looks like his left elbow is down. Can't see his knees. So that's probably, again, in Doesn't that matter. big grouping of yeah. bodies tough to say that his knees were down even before the elbow hit it looks like the determining factor would be that left elbow but looked like the ball was short you know Kevin Johns and Kevin Wilson yesterday offensive coordinator head coach said Kevin Coleman was really good 2,000 yard back drafted third round really good player really fast probably a step faster than Jordan Howard but when it comes to running with power and behind your pads this kid's got even more of it than Kevin after further review the runner was down with the ball Half a yard line from the goal line. It will be fourth and goal. The half yard line. Now, they're saying that ball will be placed at about the half yard line, so the nose of the football will be no more than a foot to a foot and a half short. It is fourth and goal. Michigan got a goal line stop two weeks ago against Minnesota to win a game. This would be to give their offense the ball with a chance to kick a field goal to win. In overtime, fourth and goal in Indiana. Lines up to go for the touchdown. Half the distance is not going to move the ball much. As Willie Henry jumped offside. Offside. Defense number 69 with contact. Penalized half the distance to the goal line. Remains fourth down. You can probably take that gamble yep. because where's the ball going? It goes from 12 inches away to 6 inches away. So Willie Henry tried to beat the snap count. This goes nowhere but in eight's belly. He's gotten you to this point. He has been the best player on the field with Chesson on the other side and Rudolph. He's got to determine this one. It is Jordan Howard leaping and it is a touchdown.
and this time there is no doubt. That's what those NFL guys like to say. No matter how ugly your Michigan sweater is, you've got to agree that is a grown man running the ball. That is 14 consecutive running plays for Indiana offensively, including all of the plays in overtime. And now it's on Michigan's offense to answer again. Jordan Howard has done something today individually that teams in a month haven't done to the Michigan defense. He's 1,500 yard back last year at UAB, Conference USA first team. Nobody really knew him and the impact that he was making in a non-Power 5 conference. Michigan knows it today. You're doing this against the third best rush defense in America, 80 yards a game. That is all they had given up on the season, 80 yards a game, 240 total a game as the second best crew. He's got 218 by himself, and everybody on the field knows it. Jim Harbaugh knows where it's going. DJ Durkin knows where it's going. That front seven for Michigan knows what's coming at them, and they still can't stop it. Now, every time Indiana has seemingly gotten the game to the point where they could win it, Jake Rudock's had an answer. His answers have been big red zone threats. J.U. Chesson's got four touchdown receptions, but Amara Darbo at six foot two, Jake Butt at six foot six. He's got plenty of targets. It's been more of a balance offensively for Michigan. Now they start at the 25. Where are you going here? If you're well, the beauty for Michigan is you got Butt, you've got Chesson, you've got Darbo, you've got a quarterback that can run. You just cannot flinch, and you have to play with tremendous poise. Rudock's thrown for 394. They'll start on the ground, though. Four yards for Davion Smith. Chase Dutra came up to make the tackle. And now limping off the field is Darius Latham. Grabbing that left hamstring, it looks like. Might be a cramp. But that's a six foot five, 300 pound junior from Indianapolis who has played almost every defensive snap tonight for Indiana that they now lose in overtime. So extended time in the huddle usually means a longer call and usually means a pass play. Play action on second and six. Rudock over the middle, into the end zone with a leap goes Jake Butt. And Michigan gets the answer. And they're a point after away from overtime number two. Can execute it much better than that. You're seeing it on both sides. You're seeing the run game executed up front perfectly. And now can this operation execute? It's been a challenge all night. Snap, hold, and kick. Scott Sipniewski is the snapper. O'Neal is the holder. That time much smoother. And right down the middle for Kenny Allen. And we play on. They can keep playing all night as far as we're concerned. This is fun. Back in a moment. The multitude of weapons for Michigan. It's time to blitz. It's time to throw caution to the wind. And you have got to be the aggressor. You've got to get a sack, a tip pass, something going the other direction that I think if you just play your base stuff, Rudonkin is in such rhythm right now, he's taking you apart. So for Brian Knorr, the only chance you're thinking as the defensive play caller for Indiana to even hold to a field goal attempt here is at some point you have to create a negative play. You just can't stop them on three downs from picking up a first down. You've had multiple opportunities. You had the two-minute drive at the end of the game, that last overtime that ended in an that overtime session and frame ended in a hurry. Yeah, I think it's time to be aggressive defensively. Well, they show blitz here. They've got six players up near the line, and they will rush. Rudock with a pump fake. Stop and go, and it is a pitch and catch for a touchdown. One play to Amara Darbo. Passes to 82, Darbo. Touchdown, Michigan. And if you're going to do it, the cardinal sin on the back end is you just can't give it up, and Richard Fant right there, Jim Harbaugh. Scratching his head, he knows he's still, still got to play some defense. That's a little double move. A perfect route. The timing, you can see Fant looking in. Hitch and go. Good night. 
The stop worked perfectly, and the go was there. Six touchdown passes for Jake Rudolph. And again, a perfectly executed point after by the battery of Sipniewski to O'Neal, and Kenny Allen puts it through. So now the Heat back on Indiana. Now they have to have a touchdown. They have run it 14 consecutive times. Does the Michigan defense finally bow up and stop the run? And do you do anything differently if you're Indiana? Then load up with Jordan Howard and go right at them again. I don't think you do it on first down, but there sure may be an opportunity since it's been 14 straight runs. But I think you've set up your play pass. Turn in the corner is Howard. He's at the 15. Back inside the 10-yard line. Boy, why play pass if you can hand it off to your big back and he finds a crease for 17 more. Well, same play they ran the last time to open up overtime. That's just that outside stretch zone play and give all the credit in the world to Jason Spriggs. That left tackle has enforced his will upon Michigan and that time once again turning Chris Wormley. Now this kid is 6'7", he's 305. The NFL scouts are looking at him. 37-inch vert, ran a 4840, is a really good athlete out on the move. And that's just dominant winning football. I mean, that's just warmly as these defensive linemen have been today. They just can't get off blocks. That's Velcro. And Jared Wilson was helped off the field. The senior safety from Akron. Shaken up on that last play. So it's first and goal, Indiana. As they look to tie and force a third overtime. There is a lot of real estate at the bottom of your screen for Simi Cobbs. As he is man for man if that's where they decide to go. Instead, they go back to Jordan Howard. And he gets to the five-yard line where it will be second down and goal. That is 34 rushes. There is no question where this ball is going. And he is so powerful. He takes it again. Now it might change. This time Michigan stops him cold at the five. Jabril Peppers sold out to stop the run and it worked. And now we've got an injured Hoosier. And it looks like Michael Cooper, the tight end. Yeah, and he's coming across the formation there. He's trying to clip Peppers, trying to get that backside cut off in that zone run, he can't. Peppers makes a really good play, but even inside was better from Willie Henry. I mean, eventually somebody has to rise up in that front. Somebody, th th this isn't complicated football. Get off your block and make a play. And that time, Willie Henry and Peppers finally slow down the big fella before he can get started downhill. If the ball's on the left hash, and you have an enormous amount of real estate out to the right, and you're Sudfeld, and you see them put nine players up in the tackle box, daring you to throw at some point do you finally after what is it 17 straight running plays put the ball in the air and get away from what puts you in this position right now with 41 points and doing something that nobody has done on Michigan this season and remember they're a check with me Bob so that's not just all Sudfield that's going to come from the sideline of when do you finally take your right it's a one-on-one -on -one. it's one on one everywhere outside but even though there's been a plus one for Michigan multiple times in the box, they can't stop the heavy run. If they throw it here and they fail, it almost guarantees they have to throw it on fourth down. Yep. If they run it here and come up short, depending on what they get, they could still run it on fourth down. So let's see if they keep their options open. It was going to be a straight pass, except a timeout it looks like was called. It was Jim Harbaugh that ran all the way down the, the sideline. Michigan's called their only timeout of this overtime period. It's a 30-second timeout. And the coach called that timeout. It's a good thing he had the cleats on. You see, <laughs> he had to go mad sprint down that sideline as well. He didn't go the Kevin Wilson route. He didn't go diagonally across the field. But he ran this, all the way down the sideline. That's exactly right. But the same kind of concept, seeing something there in that matchup, that formation that he didn't like. 
Now, in any way, do you think that tipped Indiana's hand? He called the timeout right at the snap, and there was no doubt that Sudfeld was going to throw the football. A little mind game right there. Well, I'm wondering now if you're Indiana, now do you change what you were about to do? Or on that passing play, will you normally in this situation be in your gotta have it throwing the ball Go play? down with what you do best. So you think they should run it here and maybe change what the last play call should have been? Or what? And either score on third or give yourself an opportunity to still possibly even have some balance on fourth down with as well as you've been running it. Sudfeld takes a last look over at the sideline. And they will run it. Sudfeld on a keeper. Spins down to the two. Delano Hill saved the touchdown. And now it is fourth and goal. Indiana will call a timeout. What a football game. And you're right, Brock, by picking up those three yards from the two-yard line, now you probably have the whole playbook at your you disposal. And, and, you know, you said something earlier, Bob, about the third quarters. We looked around the rest of college football, and you said, you're going to have to win some nights when you don't have your A game. Well, you know what? There's nights you have your A game, and your opponent has their A game, and that's what we got tonight. 48-41, to 41, and both of these teams have executed at such a high level, playing to their strengths. And I think Michigan is without, obviously, some of their soul in the middle of their defense. And D.J. Durkin knows if he can get out of here, he don't care about the stats. That, that coordinator in that group just wants to get off the field like mad right now. All right, you called the play in that huddle if run you're it. Indiana. What would you call? You run it, just like Marshawn should have run it in the Super Bowl. There it is with some Seattle did I say that out loud? You did. Sorry. That was for everyone to hear. Jordan Howard looks like he's set. Sudfeld will throw it. End zone. It falls incomplete. Michigan survives. Pass is incomplete. Delano Hill broke it up intended for Mitchell Page. It was 18 straight running plays until this incompletion loses it at the goal line for Indiana. And I will say this, these Michigan coaches that we have heard at times pounding on the table next to us, we're very thankful that it was a pass. They would have much rather have seen Mitchell Page try to win this game in a one-on-one -on, -one on the perimeter than they would a run game that has gashed them for 17 straight runs. And you have nothing to put your head down about, Mitchell. You put your team in a position with your punt return touchdown. Kevin Wilson, you have nothing to be ashamed about. You called a brilliant game plan. You wanted your team to swing and fight to the very end, and they did in Michigan. Well, you two have nothing to be down about. You may have been statistically gashed, but you did it when it mattered the most. Six touchdown passes for the quarterback.